You know, why not? I've never done the audio with the introduction, but I realized that I always do it on Amazon, so why not? It's copyright free music, Ben Sound. <laughs> Sabaho, everybody. Sabaho, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. And I just realized my volume is at 100%. We were going to be in feedback heaven. Um, so bye everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday morning. Uh, actually, it is episode 34 of Saturday morning with tech um, on August 22nd, 2020. I had to look because it's it's been a little bit off for me ever since August 20 because it was 8 20 2020 and then it was 8 21 2020 and there was a lot of 20s in the 20s and either way. So bye everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you're staying cool if you can. Um, the biggest thing that's going on, obviously, this time is obviously the heat waves. As a country, the U.S. is going through a massive heat wave. Um, I see Greg joined us in the in the chat. Charlie, uh, Charlie's in the in the in the comments as well. Uh, do apologize. I know I was scheduled to start at ten, and I had a couple of minutes. I forgot to tweet out the actual episode, so a few tweaks. Uh, but um, also a couple of updates going on on some of the stuff going on with the channel itself. Um, and I'll, as, as you guys are kind of uh, rolling in, uh, the goal today of video, today's video is, I guess the point or maybe not, the goal of today's video is to talk um, Galaxy Note, obviously, since this is the biggest thing coming up on the channel this week. Um, for me, I was able to get uh, both the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra, both, uh, and I did a couple of videos for you guys, and actually I posted a video last night. Uh, I do see, yeah, so the comments are jumping in. There's a little bit of a delay, and I don't know why, but uh, I see Chemi's in the comments as well. Uh, thank you, thank you. Let me know, guys, by the way, if uh, if there's any delay in the actual comments. I'm not seeing, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm noticing a little bit of a, like, they go without posting anything, and then suddenly it jumps. So maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that here on my side here, since the phone is not on the network. I'll jump on YouTube, and okay kick that out there and then I'm just gonna monitor the channel on YouTube just to be on the safe side because I have a feeling it will be a little bit dicey typical that's how it goes every week uh, last couple of videos actually I've been doing uh, I'll go back here last couple of channel videos that I've done on Amazon for some reason I keep getting disconnected so the network kind of goes bonkers let's go and bring it here and I will leave the live stream sitting there see I can see already Javier's in the comments oh actually you guys are starting to pop up um, gameplay is in the comments. I got my Note 20 Ultra yesterday. Um, oh, cased it right away, as 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 you can imagine, right away, Javier. Um, so Javier basically he got his Note yesterday. He cased it, cased it, and a screen protector right away. This thing is a monster, absolutely. And of course, right out of the box, right out of the bat, there's no question about it. Not even a second in there. Matt with his super chat, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, and I appreciate you. The I appreciate the super chat, and I have a feeling this super chat had a, had a specific uh, dedication towards a, uh, I would say, a specific device that needs a lot a lot of love this week. Which we'll talk a little bit about that one as well. <laughs> uh, as you guys probably saw on my Twitter, um, I posted a couple of days ago. Um, unfortunately, my uh, ROG Phone Two, which has been my gaming phone, surprisingly, yes. I mean, we have a lot of phones that, that come in and go here on the channel, but. Um, I've been using this phone as a gaming phone for the last year, ever since I picked it up. And for me, it's actually been a great phone. Uh, does great with battery, has a very long battery life, great audio, headphone jack, 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, 855 plus, some of the greatest specs that we can get. And uh, Matt as well has has the brother to this device, the uh, ROG Phone 2 as well. And uh, yeah, uh, I... I I really felt it, and I knew he would also feel the, the same. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that, buddy. Um, and oh, OK, good. So it's only 140 for you, Chummy. It's good. Not bad. Depending on where you guys are, let me know, of course. Uh, Matt Tyler, of course. Gary the Fireman, ha uh, happy birthday, geek. Happy Saturday, geeks. Hey, happy Saturday. Um, and of course, Aditi. Hey. We got a second. Okay, hey, good Aditya, good morning, Sabaho. Um, just kind of a thing. The only the reason why you're seeing a surprise on my face is, I've always known Aditya as a very unique name, and I've only known one Aditya. So Aditya Neil is our, our our resident Aditya, and now we have a uh, uh, Opalkar. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. Aditya Opalkar uh, is uh, our newest uh, joiner. Welcome, man. Welcome, uh, and of course, Greg. As usual, Greg is always in the comments as well. Matt. Um, the ROG Phone 2, rest, rest in peace, bad day indeed. 
so it, good. there's some good news on that side. I, I do want to mention that there's some progress, at least in what I've been doing to try to get it going. And of course, um, Hemant, uh, I want to say good morning. Getting some feedback on Note 20 Ultra, overheating issues. Will will there be another Note 7? You know, we'll talk about that. And uh, and I think the, the overheating issues that you're talking about, and let me obviously correct me if I'm wrong, you're referring to the 990 version, right? The Exynos version of the model uh, that is very, very currently available in, if I'm not mistaken, Indian market, Euro European market, markets, as well as the Middle East, uh, but not in, uh, in the home country of uh, Samsung or in the US. Those are running the Qualcomm. I personally haven't had an overheating issue where I felt like a Note 7 issue was possible, uh, but we'll have to definitely check that out. Um, oh, 141 Pennsylvania. Yes, no, definitely. I, I hope it's, the weather's nice uh, on the East Coast this time. I, it's getting a little bit cooler for us. We're not still hitting the 110s anymore. We're like in the close to 100 during the day. So it's actually quite warm. Um, I did turn off the major, <laughs> the Vordano fan that I have in the office, the air circulating fan that I have just so that we don't sound like we're in a tunnel all the time. Uh, Oh, man, Josh Quinones is in the comments, man. Good morning, man. Sabaho. So he's a buddy of mine. And he man, I hope uh, I hope the weather is a little bit nicer for you to, uh, today. I mean, as much as as much as I say it sucks for us, um, I realize that you're way further inland. So whenever we get like 110, you're hitting close to 120. So uh, Josh is a buddy of mine. We met up last year over at the Galaxy S10 launch event, and uh, we've been you know staying close to, uh, with each other since then. So definitely uh, shout out to Josh. Great content, great guy, and an all around just fun guy to hang out with. Definitely. Um, and of course, uh, Aditya, uh, you pronounced my name, my surname correctly. Yeah, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I I try. I'm not I'm not always right, but I do try. And if I do say it wrong, I always appreciate it if you let me know. Uh, Matt, of course, back in there, two Aditya's 2020. Yep, doubles. It's truly a crazy year, man. No, I mean, to me, it's a unique, beautiful name. And it's just nothing, not, not that things wrong with that. It just, like I said, it's like when you meet a second Tarek, I know, we're, you know, we're not supposed to look alike, but it's really cool. And there's something unique about it when you meet somebody, especially with a name that is unique. So always beautiful there. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, Snyder, where are you from? Um, are you from? In so I'm actually from Lebanon, uh, Beirut, Lebanon, uh, Lebanese born. I've had uh, quite a few times where people have, uh, uh, well, they thought that I was from India, but no, uh, born and raised in Lebanese, uh, Arabic guy, um, and I speak Arabic, sabah al khair, ahlan wa sahlan, speak French, bonjour, comment allez-vous, and of course, English, which is the channels that I run. Uh, but I appreciate your support. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. Um, so here, quick question. Uh, AT&T has, uh, has been promoting the S20 for five bucks per month for 30 months. Uh, would that be a better deal than the Note 20 Ultra? So if they're talking about the standard S20, I probably would say no. Um, unless, the, uh, well, so step back. Uh, from a price point, that may end up being a better deal, obviously, but the S20 was released earlier in the year. It depends on what you're looking for. The Note 20 Ultra is definitely a much higher step up from where the S20 was. Um, a, a better competition or better comparison would have been the S20 Ultra to the Note 20 Ultra. At that point, then I would say it's a little bit of uh, maybe, you know, one should be considered over the other. But from the S20 to the Note 20 Ultra, uh, you're definitely getting a lot more than just better optics. So I would definitely go with the Note 20 Ultra on that one. Uh, Adit, Matt Tyler, <laughs> definitely. Oh, man. Uh, I like Sabaho from you. Yeah. Wasim al Melti, Ahl Sabah al Khair, Ahl wa Sahlan. So, Wasim is, uh, so whenever you see somebody writing uh, Arabic words with numbers, you know they're Lebanese or they're Arabic because that's how we write it in Arabic. So, we, we combine words and, and letters and numbers uh, whenever we write Arabic words. So, uh, and in Sabah al Khair, of course, Sabah al Nur, Ahlan, Ahlan. <laughs> oh, man. Josh Kinyonis. Weather sucks. So yeah, no, um, there's no question about the fact that it is going to be a sucky weather day for us. Hold on, let me just double check because I know it's going to be like a ridiculous number and as as expected. So for me today, okay, so take that back. Today is going to be a roughly about a 95. So we may end up being close to 100, but by Wednesday, we're going to be back in the hundreds again. So really long heat wave we get through these every we get them every year but unfortunately this year it's also coming in with some fire so at least for us i don't know for you josh um we have a fire that's not that far from us which is the uh lake i think was it um lake elizabeth fire and that one is pr uh, pumping a lot of smoke and, and ash in the area so for us the air outside unfortunately is bad so either way we would have been inside anyways um let's jump real quick down here uh geeky nasim Mr. TK here, love from uh, from India. Please try to make a video on the best app series for Android. I've been uh, watching you since uh, for a very long time. 
I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I think we need to start bringing back some of the apps, uh, more apps specific software features, uh, things that help us just do more with our devices, regardless of which manufacturer version of the of Android that it's running. I think that's a great idea. I, I appreciate the uh, the comment there, and and of course, uh, I'll work on that one. Um, I, I met Matt all over. <laughs> I I meet Matt's all over the place. Okay. I, okay, so I, I didn't say it was a, you know, like I said, but I'm, I'm still sure that if you meet another Matt, there's going to be some type of excitement, even if it's not maybe at the level of, you know, where you have such a unique name that it becomes kind of like you you meet somebody like that every once in a while. I can say that at least in my lifetime, I haven't met that many Tariks except for when I was in school when I was a kid. There was another uh, Tariq that was there, and that was the only time um, that I actually met face to face with a Tariq. And uh, but I've known online actually somebody that has my actual name, um, but from another country, which is weird. So like when I when I googled myself for some reason I found myself, uh, but that person has uh, married with kids and stuff like that. Very different person, but same same names, which is interesting. Um, Beirut, <laughs> yes, Beirut. So uh, always definitely love for Beirut, and uh, of course for the for everybody doing there. And if you're uh, hopefully getting the help and the assistance that's pumping into the country at this point, there's a lot of things going in, and I know there's a lot of people uh, at least going going uh, you know trying to send some stuff there as well. Um, Ali Franco Arabi, <laughs> Franco Arabi, Franco Libane Habibna. Lebanon as a country is a fr uh, they they refer to it as a. Um, so when I grew up there, because Lebanon was a, a French colony during, uh, I think it was at the Second World War. Uh, so Lebanon has a lot of French influence in the actual culture. Uh, actually, the first language you learn after Arabic is in English, it's French. And then later on, you have the option of picking between Italian and English. And I think most people use English because obviously the international business language. Uh, so when he said, when uh, when Ali said Franco, uh, Franco uh, Arabic, uh, that's because most Lebanese people speak a little bit of a broken Arabic. Uh, they combine Arabic and French words, like, you know, they'll say English words as well. So if they're very different than most Arab countries. So I always appreciated the uh, international influences that we had. Um, not necessarily historic part of it, but definitely, you know, the fact that it is part of the culture. Definitely. <laughs> uh, lurking. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And of course... Um, Zimbabwean here, welcome, uh, living in the UK, uh, Tendai, eh, welcome, welcome, man. Oh, man, today we got a lot of new people. Welcome to the channel, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, the Tab S7 Plus or the iPad Pro 12.9, which would be a better note writing and for the longer life of the device. As iPad Pro has, uh, oh, has now student offers, which would one, which one would you prefer? Uh, so the, the recommendation is purely based on spec, mostly because I don't have access to the S7 Pro, well, the, uh, the S7 uh, Tab S7 Plus yet. I have mine reserved. I'm waiting for the orders to open up in the US. Um, most review units that people had were only a short time, so they've had to return them. So I didn't even have a chance to go play around with one of my buddies. So the short answer for that right now, if I had to just pick one over the other, um, I would definitely say base that decision on what you're comfortable using on your smartphone. If you're an Android user, I would recommend you go in with, uh, with the Tab S7. It has a lot of benefits of what Samsung has done on their devices. So uh, DeX, uh, the interfaces, uh, basically Android uh, ecosystem, the customizations that Android offer you. Uh, the pen input obviously is good, but this is where the difference uh, kind of comes in where Samsung has made leap and bounds over any other device on the market that uses a pen input on a smartphone, the iPad kind of started that whole technology ahead. So if writing and drawing are definitely on your main desire function that you want to use, I'd recommend you going with an iPad. But if you're just taking notes and you're using the S Pen for more of a basically general usage, taking writing on the screen and so on, so just general usage of it, I think the S7 Plus definitely will be a good uh, opportunity for you to use it. Uh, in the long run, obviously, uh, Samsung does support their flagship tablets, and they also trade them in as time goes on. So you're able to upgrade from one to the other if you'd like. So I'm hoping that kind of helped the decision go one way or another. Uh, I would actually, it really has to be based on what you're using. That's always the best way to kind of consider what you're looking for. Um, so going here, uh, no ads, no commercials. Uh, here, uh, is Tariq a name or is that some significance in Arabic? Uh, it's both. So Tariq is an Arabic name, um, but it comes from uh, at least the way I was told when I was growing up. Um, it actually means the first star that you see at night. So whenever whenever the sky is start darkening up and you, you look up in the sky, whatever first star you see, it's called El Tariq, which means it's the one that knocks. So it's the first one that opens the opportunity for the rest of the stars. Um, 
it's a beautiful way of saying what my name means, but that's how I know it. Uh, that's what I know it, uh, it means. Uh, and there is a slight different variation between Tariq and Tariq. There's two different people because there is a T-A-R-E-K and T-A-R-I-Q. Um, Tariq is somebody uh, is another different name, which unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, uh, doesn't mean the same thing. Uh, but depending on the dialect that you're also talking, also could mean something different. So it depends on where it's more coming from. David Burns is in the comments. Welcome back, David. Good morning. Good morning, Gary the fireman. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, Greg. All uh, because of the iPhone, of course. Um, I'm trying to figure out if the Note 20 Ultra would be worth the extra 1K from a regular smaller S20, looking for smaller options. So the only thing that you really would have to benefit from it is, A, the camera system is better. Uh, B is the S Pen functionality, the bigger battery. And I think those are the main thing. Uh, the, the S Pen, when I say S Pen, I'm talking about note taking, signing documents, uh, editing, uh, using it for gestures and all the things that the S Pen offers. If you're not interested in the S Pen, I feel like the S20 to the S, uh, like the S20 to the Note 20 comparable kind of thing, with the exclusion of the S20, would definitely be a, a you know something that you want to can uh, you know double check and see if it's worth it. If money is a concern, I definitely would just go with the S20. I, you're not going to be disappointed, but I was just putting them kind of like apples to apples. It's definitely more with the Note 20 Ultra or even with the Note 20. But again, if the price is a driver, I think the S20 is definitely a good option for you. Um, Ali, I mean, the way we write the Arabic uh, with numbers in English, it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, it is. It's a way of us uh, writing in English and Arabic so people can understand it. But the weird thing about it is we use those writing, right, Ali, to talk to other Arab people. We're not writing this language for other English speakers, right? We're writing it for us because English speakers will read the word and won't know how to write it or read it correctly because of the numbers. So it is a Franco-Arabic kind of a little bit. Uh, like a Frankenstein a little bit. But uh, what I meant to say is it's, again, still a, a unique language that we write. I Nine times out of 10, if if we want to write it, it's easier for us to write it in this way. So I, I appreciate it. Um, hey, hey, HKTK, the vocal about the Exynos uh, inferiority. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough thing for people to realize the fact is, look, I realize that the Exynos is not at the 990 has had problems since the S20 line of devices. This isn't new. The problem is Samsung actually kind of decided not to address this concern and try to fix it with the uh, the new Note line of devices. They decided to go back to the 990, it, almost as if I feel like maybe they didn't get the original message. So I, I, I will try to make sure that I do speak to it. Um, Matt in the comment and I did some testing in the past with, an, uh, with the Exynos and the, uh, even with the Exynos and the Qualcomm chipset. And we realized that even the Exynos to a certain point on some benchmarks doesn't even run the benchmark, like the OpenCL benchmark in uh, Geekbench doesn't even go through. So for me, it's an issue that they decided to go this way. I think from a cost standpoint, they're not lowering the price of the Exynos model. They're not giving it to you at a lower price. They're giving it, they're selling them pretty much comparable in the pricing. But yet they're still demanding, you know, that that you know people still accept this as a as a function. And the fact of the matter is, when you emphasize the cameras, when you emphasize the horsepower, and you want people to use your devices, you need to have the ability of actually providing them a good experience where it doesn't become a concern. Now, um, Matt, if you can let me know in the comments, I don't and I don't mean to put you on the spot there, but I do want to mention is, uh, it, have you had any concerns when you maybe put a case on a device that is running in the Exynos, like the S20? Is it something that is comparable then? Do you, are you okay with the heat or does it still feel pretty warm? Uh, but I appreciate the comment there, of course. Um, and I, oh, sorry, did want, did not want to miss this. Uh, <laughs> I have the doormat. Uh, Oh, man, that is a pun against Matt Tyler. Uh, thank you very much, Gary the Fireman, for, of course, with the super chat. I appreciate it. always supporting uh, the channel. And, of course, uh, believe it or not, all of those are going to be going into uh, the uh, the replacement of this because I need to fix the screen. I need to bring the, Ro the ROG Phone 2 back to life. Um, now, luckily, the phone itself is not damaged. It's primarily what actually happened, and we'll talk a little bit. So the the actual glass on the outside is not broken which is the weird part the digitizing uh, the digitizer the lcd essentially is that on the, behind the glass on the outside is what broke uh, and let me see if i can actually get it to turn on cuz i've had it's a hard it's, it's like a weird thing here like you know you you try to get it and the screen sometimes turns on sometimes doesn't turn on the short answer is it's pretty much non usable i can't play games with it we can't really do much now i can connect it to an external display using the side uh, the side usb c option that we have here 
Um, but for that, it primarily just serves uh, for me as I'm able to actually use it, uh, but I'm not able to actually play games because, you know, keyboard and mouse and functions and so on. So for me, uh, it's it needs to be replaced. So with that, uh, and I just posted it recently. I hope you guys got a chance to check that out. Um, uh, actually uh, posted it saying that I ordered that. So I found one for about a hundred bucks on eBay um, and it hopefully will be here within a week. So as soon as I get it, um, I'm actually thinking maybe I'll just do one live stream of me replacing the glass. Uh, and that'll be an interesting, you know, uh, what, what, you know, if TK would, would ever try to be like Jerry rig everything, uh, that would be the video, except, you know, Jerry uh, was well, except for Zach growing the beard and getting into Goku central. And then of course working it. So, um, but I am going to actually end up trying to find a right tool set to uh, pick up because I do need some tools to be able to open up. I haven't had to open up my devices for such a long time. Um, at least you know somebody in another country that has your name. My, uh, my name is the, uh, is the name of the Resident Evil character, which I found out <laughs> when I played the game. Javier uh, Hidalgo. Oh, Hidalgo, yes. Yes, but Hidalgo has such prestige, you know, right? Like when you talk about Hidalgo, it's like, you know, I, I was out with Hidalgo. It's a strong, it's a very strong name. You should always appreciate it. Tarek is a good name and it's a very nice name. It just, it's, a, like I said, it's it's rare, very rare. And ever since I've been in the US, um, and that's been a long time, I haven't met another Tarek. Tarek is just literally not a, not a name that comes up. Now, keep in mind, I do go by TK, so... That could also be the reason. Maybe people don't hear my real name and they assume that, you know, that is my name. But uh, it is definitely very interesting. Uh, Gary, <laughs> because of iPhones, man, guys, I think I'm a little bit behind on comments. Let me see where, where we are here. Um, so, Matt, the S20 Ultra got a bit, uh, oh, got a hit. Uh, battery was not very good. Performance suffered. Uh, having a case didn't, uh, didn't even help uh, to help all of that at all. So, yeah, I can imagine that, you know, I think what, what, we, what we see now is, I feel like it just there's a there's a very weird mixed message coming in from Samsung with the Note line of devices, and I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact of the you know the current situation and the fact that this was an online event and so on, but we have there's that first there's the the, the processor strength thing right there's the whole Exynos versus Qualcomm and you know which one is better why did they go with one over the other um, and there's also the fact that you know the actual experience the unboxing experience is a little bit different which I haven't seen before and I'm not complaining for the sake of complaining it's just when I look at it at, at the end of the days you know we're spending a thousand twelve hundred thirteen hundred bucks for a phone with trade-ins and so on that story obviously may change which is what I did I ended up uh, trading in some of my old devices um, you know, but no, no headphones, uh, in the U S which is the weird part. So in the U S we don't get headphones, but in the UK, in the middle East, we do get headphones. So that's one thing that, and then the weird part about it in the box, they left the open space. Now, luckily, if you guys are in the U S and you are picking up the note 20 or the note 20 ultra, please, please make sure to call customer service at Samsung and ask them for those headphones. They actually will send them to you for free without a charge. So it's not something that you can't get is just um it's something that you actually have to ask for which is i, I feel like by the time we get to the s30 we're not going to be getting them um the other little surprising thing that i noticed not, not a lot of people are covering in their videos is the fact that we don't have replaceable tips for the s pen uh this is different so even the replaceable tips you know if you remember getting a note from previous generations we don't have the remover or even the tips themselves so that ends up being something that we have to pay extra for also. I, I don't know, um, not necessarily why uh, that is something that we would need to keep in, you know, I, I don't know why we're going into that situation where we have to buy the accessories. Uh, I know there was a lot of rumors talking about, you know, Samsung removing the charger and so on. No, the chargers are there and everything else is pretty much the same experience. You know, the S Pen is great. The phone is great. And I'm actually not hating the... Um, the Note 20, uh, the Note 25G, and I'll talk to you guys about why I feel like the Note 25G still has some really good, unique experiences that I think we should still consider if we're looking at a Note, uh, with the exception of the back. We'll talk about that a little bit. So again, that that goes through the whole. There's a little bit of a mixed conversation going on with what Samsung's providing us. They're still saying pretty much that the Note 25G is the gold source. I think uh, the Ultra, sorry. So the Ultra is pretty much what I think they're driving all of their traffic towards, but even that one doesn't come with a headphone jack. Uh, the, the sorry, the uh, the USB-C headphones. It also doesn't come with the replaceable tips. So those are things that I feel like should have been included at thirteen hundred dollars, at a thousand dollars. Those are little things that people generally, you know, even if they don't use them, it's still part of the experience. That if something does go wrong with the tip on your S Pen, now your S Pen is out of commission for however long it takes you to get a replacement. So that's a bit of a bummer there. But again, 
uh, I digress. We'll have to kind of jump back a little bit on that. Let me see if we can jump back into the comments. Um, so, uh, oh, Josh is <laughs> Josh is jumping in. Uh, Dragon Ball shirts are a little bit of everywhere. Uh, Kohl's has been really good. Walmart's been really good. There's also, um, I want to say, Hot Topic in the mall. They usually have really good. They'll they'll have a drop of new shirts for Dragon Ball every one every couple of months or so, and they'll have a few different series. So I generally pick up my shirts from there. Um, I've gone to I think the six two six market one time with Josh uh, Joshua Vergara one time, and we picked up the uh, Saiyan Forever kind of thing. Uh, and of course, as time goes on, I build up more things. I have you know Dragon Ball shirts and uh, posters and characters, and you know surprisingly enough, I haven't had a sip yet. And of course, Dragon Ball cups, <sighs> always great. And uh, this time, actually, I don't know if you guys noticed it, Vegeta saying hello, or actually saying peace. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's generally everywhere. But I feel like Coles, Coles does have a, a really good combo on it. A hot topic provides, uh, not that it provides, but they, like I said, they change the selection every once in a while. Uh, Walmart will have one, you know, couple of shirts for a while, and you'll never see another one. So I tr I, I try to go different places, and of course, Amazon is always your friend. I guess that's the best way to say it. Um, uh, okay, so, Cien. Uh, Sensei, Sensei, hopefully I'm saying it correctly. Uh, Tariq is the main character of A Thousand Splendid Sun, th uh, though. Yes. And again, not, not that there's anything wrong with Tariq. It just, um, and I'll, so I'll, I'll say this, and, and I don't mean it in disrespect to the name Tariq. Um, Lebanese language has a very interesting uh, dialect. So the word street in Arabic is Tariq when I say it in Lebanese Arabic. So the phonetic sound, even though they don't spell the same way, uh, phonetically, we sound they sound the same. So it's not that it's a bad way of saying it, but when you write it T-R-I-I-R-T-A-R-I-Q, to me, it sounds like you're saying Tariq, which to me is, it sounds, because of the Lebanese listening way, I'm just, because of the way I was raised, um, it sounds like we're saying street. So to me, Tariq is the, the way I say it. Now, I'm pretty sure Tariq, T-A-R-I-Q, is spelled and phonetically sounds closer to it. But when you read it, uh, unless I'm reading it wrong, so is it Tariq or Tariq? That's the question. Is it still phonetically sounding like the way my name is spelled? Uh, I'll jump into that one in a bit. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abdul Hamid al-Zubdi. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I paused a second there just to, to make sure I read the name correctly. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, what about the Realme 6 Pro? Um, you know, I haven't had a chance to play with that one. I, I mean, I, I've seen... So I, Realme is a very interesting um, brand of devices. Now, sadly, it hasn't really made it to the US, but it actually ha makes a very big uh, presence from the price point, the features, the displays. Obviously, you get massive displays on these devices. And obviously, being a, a sub-brand of... Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Realme is the sub-brand of Oppo you get a lot of the benefits of what Oppo provides in the market. Now, Xiaomi and, of course, other manufacturers make these devices to put them on the market to provide kind of not necessarily a competition for themselves, but they give you the option to be able to pick out a great budget-friendly phone with some basic, basically decent features at a good price. Um, Realme devices for me have always been great. Uh, and for me, as far as the Realme Note 9, I think it's for me, it was great. Uh, I had an opportunity to play with it if I can actually find my Realme. But the, the answer for that is, I think as long as it fits what you need, the price is always going to work for you. You'll find an option. And outside of the US, Realme, Xiaomi, Oppo, and of course, uh, you know, um, all the different brands that we have are available. You have a lot more options. So, you know, when OnePlus came in with the Nord, I felt like there was a great competition in the US once the Nord ever makes it here. But it has a lot of competition in the Indian market. Like you said, the Realme and the Xiaomi devices that are already out there. Um, and I think Matt played with one before. Uh, so Matt saying, Josh Kinyaros, hey, man, uh, we need to chat with you coming up on the, across the podcast. So, uh, Josh, if you're still in the comments, checking it out, uh, Matt, Matt and Sam have a Across the Podcast uh, that goes up. And oh, speaking of which, uh, for the Across the Podcast, uh, guys, tomorrow's podcast, if if I'm not mistaken, guys, is not going to happen tomorrow, right? It's going to happen on Monday. If, you, if I'm not mistaken, you guys have a couple of special guests that are coming on. So uh, it, uh, let me know. Do me a favor, post the post it in the chat if you don't mind, Matt or Sam, if you're in there, and let me know. I, I want to make sure to, uh, people are aware of it. Uh, Elias, it's 11.30 in India right now. Uh, Elias Khan, <laughs> well, I appreciate you hanging out with us. And, uh, you know, hopefully you're you're enjoying the time and it's nice and cool now that it is 11.30. Uh, I can tell you that for us, at least here, it's warming up a lot. And I, I can appreciate it just hanging out and it's quiet and just kicking it. Um, 
and I think we talked about that one there, Javier Hidalgo. Apparently in the UK, I believe they also got a plastic case in the box uh, from some of the unboxing that I've seen. So uh, something tells me that Samsung wanted to, I'm, I'm not sure. I really don't know. The, the plas So the, for me, the plastic cases obviously are, are nice. You know, they carry you over till you get to where you need to. Uh, but here, so this is the Note 20 Ultra Fine. This is the, the expensive version. And I have the box sitting here because I, I didn't do the video for it yet. Um, what I mean by this is you see that little space that's sitting next to the cable? This is where normally the headphones would have been. The space is still there. It tells me that something is missing. Um, and Samsung, back in the olden days, they used to include an adapter. And again, they left the space for it. So the space is still there. Now, I know we don't need the adapter anymore since we can use USB-C to USB-C. But we don't have the adapter. We don't have the, uh, the headphones. We don't have, um, what is it called? The replaceable tips for your, uh, for your S Pen anymore. So I know this is the box that comes on the top. This is typically where the case would be and where you would be able to find your additional uh, tools. So the only thing that's included in the box are the instructions. So basically the warranty, the Samsung care uh, information, and of course the SIM removal tool. So it's it's very, it's a different experience. Let's just say this. At the end of the year, when you're getting the note, you're always expecting to get the best that Samsung has to offer at the end of the year. That's at least my perspective. When we see that the Note 20 Ultra is getting less than what the Note 20, S20 Ultra got as a device, it's a little bit, uh, that that's what I was trying to shoot for. But the case at the end of the day, obviously, it just it kind of adds to the same story. Something is going on in the in the I, I would say promotional side of Samsung, where it's kind of moving towards, um, you know, they're shifting. It, it, it seems like they're shifting. They're doing some type of a shift or a pivot in the actual marketing, and I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this the byproduct of it. Not that I'm complaining about that. I'm just saying is when you're used to it and your your you know your prices are going up on a year to year end it's hard for a consumer to understand why especially the loyal consumers not the new people that are generally you know like S20 line of devices and they you know they want to try the note it's your hardcore note fans the people that buy this phone every year that i bought two of them uh, those are the people that are going to uh, they're going to see it and i mean even reviewers are jumping on this as well uh here jumping in uh they're getting really probably to remove the charger from the s21 um there is a good possibility but i find that the, the charger so uh rashid al uh i, I want to say it's a hard for them to remove the charger till they're able to provide us some type of solution to charge it mostly because a couple of things a um you need to be able to power on the device right even if they do give you a full charge on the phone it's a little bit hard for them to guarantee that by the time you get the phone depending on how long it sits on a shelf or in a warehouse uh how much power you have left on your device you know obviously it's off but there's always somewhat somewhat of a uh, percentage that doesn't actually make it to the end so if you don't have a charger and especially with these chargers being expensive are we gaining it to the point where the phones will keep getting more and more expensive? And now at the same time as you're buying a you know, $1,300, $1,400 phone, you're having to buy the charger for it. This is going to be a little bit hard. I find I feel like the last thing that will not be showing up in the box will be the charger. But I feel like we're, we're there at this point, right? The only thing we got in this box with this phone was a charger and a cable. Those are the only two things left, Samsung. I hope we, I hope we don't lose them. But I'm also hoping that you bring some of the other stuff back. That's really what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that you hear from the uh, the concerns that we're seeing, um, at least with the uh, Note 20, and that you're able to address some of those concerns. Um, yeah, no, sorry. The comments are kind of like jumping here. So David is, I bet I bet it's a, it's a fine phone. I just feel like they're uh, they've been taken for a while when it comes to the Note. It depends on the note uh, on the usage, right, David? So I, I would say, David, um, it depends on what you use, right? So for me. The ROG Phone 2 is a gaming phone. I would buy the ROG Phone just because of that feature. I'm not buying it for the camera. I'm not buying it because it's a, um, a large display because we can get any, any other phone that has a large display. I'm buying it because it's a 6,000 milliamp battery, 120 hertz refresh rate, LCD panel, front-facing speakers that sound amazing, headphone jack that actually is still present on the phone, uh, side mounting options for display port, dock, accessories, and so on that are gaming-centric. And that's what I'm buying into. I'm buying into that ecosystem. When you go into the Note line, you're going for that ecosystem. You're going in for specifically, you know, either, so an example would be with either the 20 Ultra or the 20, um, and you're going in for that S Pen. You're going in for the S Pen features because that's what's driving the function here. Because without the S Pen, realistically, I think the S20 Ultra will be basically a good option. Although the camera is a little bit of a concern there, I would say this is something that if you want to get into a Samsung ecosystem, the S20 Ultra is still 
if I can find mine. Sorry about that. The S20 Ultra is still really, I would say, the best um, option that you can get from them. But if you don't need the S Pen, I don't think people should consider the Note. I think the Note is a nice phone to have. There's no real feature that's given to the Note outside of the S Pen features that make it unique enough to say that it's better than anything else. I think the S20 Ultra is still a very capable phone, probably a little bit cheaper than it was when it first launched. Um, and if you don't need an S Pen, I wouldn't recommend getting a Note. But if you are looking for the functionalities, the ability of actually taking in notes, the ability of actually doing that precise fine-tuned editing on the screen, uh, the ability of actually using translations, uh, gestures on the phone, doing all the other things that a Note can for business tools, signing documents, that's another big thing that a lot of us don't realize. The Note is one of the simplest devices to actually sign documents and actually do authentication based uh, signing uh, documents on this. And of course, having that precise drawing function whenever you're editing tools, using editing tools. So to me, those are the things that I appreciate the Note for. But again, we've also historically seen that the Note line generally provides the best that what Samsung has to offer in the end of the year. So we did get the 865 Plus. That's a given. This year, they did actually upgrade the processor, at least on the Qualcomm side. The 990 is still the same for the Exynos market, which is, again, a little bit of a, I would say, a controversial conversation that goes on there. Uh, because of the concerns that they had with the S20 line to kind of carry it over at the end of the year, either tells us that they didn't want to upgrade the uh, Exynos. They felt like it was one line to carry, but I feel like they need to change that methodology as well. They should have uh, addressed some of the concerns with the original version and fixed it with the second one. Um, and of course, then, you know, we start talking about, you know, all the other things that you, you're able to do with the device, right? So it it, it's the 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 better battery supposedly, but we have a smaller battery than the S20, so that's a little bit of a back step. Um, we also have the uh, the fact that you know we anticipated to have more features and so on. Um, we didn't go to uh, you know One UI to uh, 3.0. We went from 2.1 to 2.5, small bump upgrade. And I feel like the biggest change between the two is the fact that we can use uh, standard Android gestures on custom launchers on One UI, which is a little bit of a different option. So there's a few minor things, but I think again, if you like the Note and if you like the productivity function that you can get from using an S Pen, there's not much else on it on the market like it right now from a single pen usage device. And this is with a native support. Um, LG started to come out with devices. Obviously, the LG, I think, was it the uh, the V60 was the, in the US at least. Um, we'll actually, take that back. The G8X was the first one. Step back. V60 and the, uh, the V60 and the uh, LG Velvet are both US this year 2020 devices that are supporting uh, the basically the bamboo pen from uh, the Microsoft bamboo pen. Or those are the bamboo pens that you're able to use with like Microsoft Surface type of devices. And those are also getting better, and we're seeing better integration for the software there. But not much on the market still has that feature of supporting the pen directly in the actual phone. Also includes charging for the pen, not have to worry about it, gestures, all the different functions that you've had, and of course, simple usability of the S Pen itself. Uh, so it's it's something that to be appreciated that Samsung is putting in a lot of work when it comes to these devices. Let's keep going here. Uh, Josh. Hey, yeah, definitely. No, so Josh and Matt, definitely you guys need to uh, hook up and uh, get it, get that conversation going. Um, this is super cool. I, I, I love learning about languages. No, I, I always great. And um, I don't know if the, uh, Steve DeRoche is going to be in the comments or not, but uh, I always love having Steve in there. So he's French Canadian. He always jumps in with a little bit of Francais in there. Uh, and it's a little bit of different French than the European French or the uh, the Parisian French, if I, if I have to differentiate between the two. Uh, special guest, woo -woo, definitely Josh Quinones. Um, do you think that the Note 10 will possibly get wireless decks through a future update? Um, very, very possible. I think the wireless text functionality should have been here years ago. Uh, One UI, uh, not One UI, uh, EMUI on Huawei devices has had the wireless desktop experience for years. And I felt like that has always been that one little thing that Samsung didn't want to just give us, right? First, DeX needed to be connected to a dock. Then DeX needed a wire. And then DeX didn't need a special wire. Now you sneak and use any wire. So I feel like at, as time goes on, Samsung is slowly realizing that I think they need to kind of unleash and allow DeX to be its, its own thing. Um, so short answer, yes. I think the One UI 2.5 should be able to bring wireless DeX. If, as long as your device gets it officially, you should be able to get the wireless DeX functionality. If you receive the wired without the dock, this should be pretty much the same. Uh, I think they will just follow each other and work from there. Um, let's next here. Sabah, hey, Aditya, hey, Sabah, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't know if you, when did you get a chance to jump in, bud? But uh, we have a doubleganger. We have another Aditya in the comments that uh, would be nice. 
I'm geeking out. It obviously, you know, th there's more than one Aditya in the world, but it just to me, it's always great. Um, good morning, good morning, welcome, man. Um, okay, so Holly Slaw, uh, sorry, didn't mean to do that clap there. Um, hello there, TK. Um, which one should I get? The Note 10 Plus V60 with a dual screen or the Velvet? Ah, that's a tough one. So if if the V60 is on the table, I honestly would just say go with the V60. Uh, between the three the, 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 between the three different devices that we're looking at here, I feel like it's the best combo for features that you're looking for. Um, uh, it gives you the ability of having the dual screen if you want it. It has pen input if you need it. Uh, it is sold separately, but you can get it as low like as twenty five bucks for the bamboo pen. Um, Great cameras on the front, pro cameras on the uh, as well as on the front and the back, and the tools that you get in there are going to be absolutely fantastic. Five thousand milliamp battery, wireless charging. It's not a high res uh, high refresh rate uh, display, but I think none of the three options that you gave us there are going to be one of those. So, for a 1080p, 60 frames per second, all around, great experience and long battery life with the five thousand milliamp here. And the ability of getting that second screen for when you want that dual screen multitasking king kind of a thing. I still think the V60 is a great option. The Velvet will be a little bit of a cheaper option and slightly better improvement on software, but the improvements between the Velvet and the V60 are very small. Um, and the only reason why I'm, I'm not referring to the Note 20 Ultra, because that obviously is the connection there, you went with the Note 10 Plus. It, that's a great phone. It's a large uh, form factor, and I think it still will carry you well in this year. But I feel like if you just want to get the 5G, you want to be able to stay on the same bandwagon of you know making sure that you're future-proofing your device, I feel like that uh, the V60 will kind of knock it out of the park for you. Uh, it offers, honestly, some of the best options, and the price point is great, definitely. So save some dollars as opposed to the Note and still get some of the best options uh, from what you're able to get right now. Uh, Geeky uh, Nassim says, um, as you are from XDA, so yes, <laughs> Uh, the best background uh, for developers and known for the best customization, the modifications for our Android phones. And you can definitely uh, help us make most of our phones as always. Yes, no, I appreciate it. And I think that Nassim's uh, referring to the comment we did before with the custom apps and so on, uh, the, the the ability of you know, bringing in a new series there. I think that's a great option. I appreciate that. Uh, and yes, uh, although I'm not... I'm not producing as much on the XDA TV channel as, as I used to before. Uh, I'm still part of the uh, the team there, and they're they're definitely. Um, I was actually responding to somebody on, over on Twitter this morning uh, regarding a comment, some comments about the first OnePlus One. Um, and the reality of the matter is, the OnePlus One and OnePlus as a company probably owes a lot to the first OnePlus One and CyanogenMod back in the day. Not just the device, but CyanogenMod because it was the first device to be released with CM, which was always known as a custom ROM, always like an aftermarket ROM that you installed on a phone as its primary operating system. So it was something that for me, uh, that was always kind of like, it will always hold a special place for me. Um, sadly, I was mentioning before is the, the fact that um, the actual unit itself that I had for my review back in the day was a loaner. I borrowed it from the uh, editor in chief over at XTA. Um, because he got it, and it was during that time when they were doing the whole invite system thing, which you had to be, you know, know somebody, or you know, I don't know. It was just so you, you know, very exclusive, um, and um, I wasn't able to get a phone. So by OnePlus Two, that kind of got a little bit better for me. Uh, but I appreciate that. Yeah, no, always, always nice. Um, Aditya, uh, yeah, definitely. No, no. <laughs> so they're talking to each other. Aditya has uh, 1.3 billion Indians, Mr. Burns. Uh, <laughs> Realistically speaking, there are going to be multiple other Adityas in the world. I love those numbers. I, I, so Aditya, it, it isn't, it, it's always been me. I kind of started at the beginning. I it's just, as I'm going through the comments, um, I read the first name and I generally look at the picture right away. So that kind of stood out to me right away uh, when I saw the other gentleman on, on there as well. Uh, Gary Aditya. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. You guys are jumping on each other. Um, Oh, so here, uh, thanks for, for the insight, TK. Although I don't really need uh, or will use 5G, but yeah, the V60 offers uh, a lot of, especially for the multitasking, problem would be is getting the pen uh, in my place in Taiwan uh, right now. So again, the, the pen itself, um, if you're buying it from a carrier, you can probably pick it up directly from them. There are different versions. Now, the one we refer, refer to is the bamboo pen. That's one of them. Uh, but there are other options that you're able to pick up. It's not the only pen available. Uh, but my only other option I would probably say is if a pen is needed to be, like if you like the function of having the pen housed directly in here and not having to carry it, 
the Note 10 Plus may actually come back into the gameplay here. That has a little bit of a, a benefit there. Uh, carrying it, not having to worry about losing it, obviously carrying an extra pen with you when you're using it in the dual, dual display. Uh, that's one thing that I feel like LG still hasn't figured out how to do. The V60 did not come with a pen and neither did the Velvet. You're able to pick them up separately, but it still has to be carried separately as well. So that integration still hasn't been fully circled back with there. And I hope that they do fix that hopefully soon. Um, Salam alaikum, uh, uh, S. Rahman. Uh, actually, I did say that correctly. So I got the Note 20 Ultra three days ago. Um, what do you think about battery life? Will it improve? Thanks. So well, actually, this is, I appreciate it, and I think this is a good segue into it. Um, the battery life or the battery on the Note 20 Ultra, which, again, is supposed to be the best, literally. Like, that's how Samsung has typically has done it, um, is, I would say, okay. It's not great. And I feel like for the large display that we have, even with the adaptive uh, 120 hertz refresh rate that we have here with 1080p resolution, um, still it doesn't really outdo or at least outlive what the, S, uh, the S20 Ultra has performed for us. There's that 5,000 milliampere, and I think psychologically that's also playing a factor in there. Um, what I would probably say is this: um, first and foremost, the adaptive of uh, the adaptive battery function in Android takes time to build up. There's also the other factor that, as we always do, there's that honeymoon phase that a lot of us don't realize we're in at the beginning. Is that first few days when you get a brand new device, your hands are on that device all day long. You're taking pictures all the time, and you're actually using it in a, I would say, a use case scenario that is not typical. It is not going to be your atypical situation on a daily basis. As time goes on, after a week or so, your usage will adjust. Your battery also will start, your device will start learning more about your usability. And of course, the power management starts kicking in. Um, I think the 4500 is okay. I think it's definitely something that we should have had. Um, the 45 should have been on the Note 20 and a 5000 should have been on the Note 20 Ultra. That should be the, the only thing for me because um, the weird part about it is the Note 20 Ultra is a big phone. It's slightly bigger than the S20 Ultra. Um, the presence of the pen is what Sony, what, sorry, what Samsung is saying is the cause for the battery reduction in size. I, I'm agree with you. I'll agree with you on that as in why, uh, but the choice of making it this thin is also yours. And the fact is when they did make it so thin, they gave us a massive by a camera hump, which also kind of puts in a little bit of a wobble situation when you put it on the table. That's why we need cases. Um, Speaking of which, not that I want to shamelessly plug my video, I did put a case uh, video for the uh, S20, sorry, the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra yesterday, the official Samsung cases yesterday. So if you guys would like to check that out. Um, at the end of the day, I think I feel like the battery life will get better. I think we'll we'll, we'll start getting better, uh, longer battery life uh, out of our devices. And I feel like once Android 11 comes in, we'll hopefully get some more optimizations. Um, the 865 Plus by default is always going to be a more of a power hungry device. It's a it's an overclock processor than what we saw with the 865. So you need to appreciate that. Um, I think Samsung still needs to tweak it a few uh, a little bit more for us to get a better battery life. It's not going to be as good as the S20 Ultra, but um, honestly, the fact is we have so many ways of charging our device, and it charges so much faster with the 45 watt charger. If you don't have one, um, not that I want to make sure you know recommend not buying the original one. Uh, get something like this off of Amazon. So about 40 bucks, 39 dollars. It's called the Juice Box Pro from Zero Lemon. I covered that in the video yesterday. Um, it has wireless charging, fast wireless charging, USB-C, PD up to 45 watts. They'll give you that charging speed that you want on your phone. And of course, keeps your devices running. And it has 20,100 milliampere in there, which will charge our note up to four times, a little more than four times, and still keeps you going and small enough that it'll fit in your backpack. So those are things that I would recommend. I don't think people are worried too much about the battery when it comes to the Note. Uh, the current situation that's going on with it right now is it's forcing us to be home. We're on our phones more often. We're watching content. We're doing more. And I still feel like the honeymoon phase will definitely uh, will adjust. Not going to go away. We'll adjust. So that's why I haven't put out my, my battery testing on this or my battery results yet. First few days for me, uh, the Ultras, sorry, take that back. I keep mixing them up. Uh, the Ultra is primarily what I'm running on. Um, it hasn't been that great, but um, honestly, it hasn't really died on me either. So I haven't got to the point where my phone just hits, you know, two or 5%. I've been able to get through the day and still about 15 to almost 15 to 20%. Uh, that again, with playing a lot, watching content a lot, using the S Pen and learning all the cool things about it. Uh, the new Aditya is, in, is enjoying the show. Appreciate it, bud. Uh, good vibes. Uh, Hakubuna. Uh, okay. Sorry. I, it's not, your name sounded uh, like something else I know. Um, on initially using the, uh, the, oh, so okay. On this Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy Tab S uh, 12 plus 12.4 is very nice. Um, 
And of course, uh, weighty, but nice quality, nice upgrade from the Samsung Tab S3 and S, uh, S4. Um, so I've actually used the Tab S, the first Tab S. That's the last time I bought a Samsung tablet. Um, I've been uh, not trying to say that, but I've actually shifted over to Huawei tablets in the past, uh, media pads, mostly because uh, the price point and the features that they offer. Uh, they also offered some S Pen functionalities. Uh, I'm looking in, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the S, uh, the Tab S7 Plus does. I don't think the S7 has uh, enough features for me to justify going back into tablets with Samsung, but the S Pen, uh, the uh, the S7 Plus definitely. So I appreciate you giving us some of that comment there. Uh, Sam, of course, is in the comments. Welcome. Good morning. Oh, the Note 20 Ultra will be the first note that I skip. I'm all into the duo. So, yeah, um, last week, I think uh, right around the, when they announced the uh, the new Surface Duo from Microsoft, I think Sam and if, I think Sam and Juan Carlos were the two, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if Juan did decide to jump on it, but Sam definitely is going straight for the duo. Um, I'm actually still on the fence between the duo and the fold, mostly because of just the functionality. I want to see how the Duo does initially, and I also want to see how how Microsoft supports it. So is it going to get the updates that it's supposed to? Is it is this something that you want to jump into, or is it something that um, right now it's more of a, you know, like they're, they're bringing in the first generation and they're basically trying to test the waters. So I want to see how it is. I love the, the initial impressions that we've seen the videos on. I love the form factor. I like the fact that it actually is a dual screen folding. The mechanism that it has is just absolutely fantastic. Um, but I'm also looking to see some of the improvements that Microsoft does on the UI element so that it allows other manufacturers or other developers to optimize their apps for dual screens. Because believe it or not, even though that's exciting for a lot of people, for me, that translates straight into what uh, LG is doing with the V60 and the Velvet and the G8X and the, v uh, the V50 from last year. Those devices that support dual displays will get the optimizations of dual screen devices and I think the Duo is the right platform to push that ecosystem forward. So I'm looking forward to Sam to get his. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Sam, um, the device will, will should be getting in maybe mid-September, so about a month or so, a little bit less than a month from now. So I'm definitely looking forward to, to seeing what Sam's uh, impressions are of this one, of course. Uh, Sam, good morning, sir. Hope's doing well, Matt. <laughs> uh, the new DTA has been promoted to head a DTA, head a DTA. Ah. Okay. Okay. So Matt, Matt, <laughs> Matt and Aditya, you guys are having way too much fun with this conversation at this point. Um, at David Byrne facts, of course. No, definitely. Uh, does the form factor of the Galaxy Bean uh, is comfort or does it dig into your ears? Um, so the... The initial, I would probably say it, they don't. Uh, it's actually very comfortable to wear. Uh, believe it or not, the, the bean shape of the actual Galaxy beans uh, are very much, at least for my ears, which I do understand that not everybody's ears are the same. Um, it actually sits very nicely into the ear, and it just just covers it perfectly. And it, it's they're so small, so light, that it's hard to actually uh, believe it. But sometimes I forget that I'm wearing them. The only reason I remember that they're in my ears is because of the uh, the way the sound changes with the active noise cancellation that comes through it. But other than that, I think, no. Uh, I've had them in there for three hours uh, straight and seriously, not a problem. Um, some of the discomforts actually that you've seen from other devices that have other things to help them stabilize, those because they generally dig or they'll actually touch on the side of your ear, tend to provide some discomfort over time. But this one literally sits in the actual um, the curvature of your ear, and it just sits very nicely. Um, the personal choice for me is I'm using them with the, uh, there's an actual uh, an extra piece in there in the, in the actual box to change that little insert. And I did change it to be on the larger side for it to fit nicely. I felt like the small one was a little bit loose in my ear. But that, again, that's more of a personal touch kind of thing. Uh, very nice and very comfortable to use. Um, still getting about a day and six hours worth of combined st uh, standby on time on S9 Plus, about six hours of YouTube. No, I, so my thing would be is really uh, m there's w the coverage on devices these days. Kind of uh, we you know we talk about phones as if like the older phones for some reason cease to exist. No, I, there's a really good still big market. The S9 Plus. I mean, my mom still uses the S9 Plus, and I still love the fact that it's getting updates. It's getting usage out of it. The battery is uh, it's big. It's one of those things that you appreciate. Why you do buy the the Plus line of the device? You want to get that bigger battery. You want to get that longevity of usage. So yeah, even if there is any degradation on the battery uh, over the years, it still is a great device. I I, I agree. Uh, the S9 Plus is an is an amazing uh, device. Uh, <laughs> مساء النوم طبعا من الاردن اهلا وسهلا 
Abu Hamid. Oh, so he's from, uh, so he's following us from Jordan. Yes, no, it is very, I do realize the time difference in, in Lebanon. So uh, Jordan is exactly, it's like the sister, right? Right next to Lebanon. Uh, and I visited Jordan when I was when I was very very young. I I appreciate uh, the the place is amazing and the food is great. Uh, can't can't waste to use it. Oh, it's, absolutely. Yeah, no. Uh, that the devices like that are begging for e-readers and having native support for that and having that function work. Sam, I, I'm with you on that one. Uh, uh, what do you recommend for a more an ASUS RG43 or the Black Shark? Um, it it's hard it's hard to comp um. If you had to compare between the two and ha having an actual he headphone jack is not an issue, I feel like the ROG3 still kind of wins when it comes to specs. From a, from a savings point of view, I feel like the Black Shark 3 Pro is the better deal, uh, mostly because of just when you start comparing the two. On the, although the high refresh rate is still going to be given to the ROG Phone 3, but at the end of the day, there's a there's one thing that a lot of, um, and I don't know if it's because they're, they're not necessarily focusing on it or they don't see a lot of it, a lot of the games on the market right now are still not rated or still not optimized to run at 120 or even 144 hertz. Uh, so what that means essentially is that you're getting a high refresh rate monitor and you're getting a high refresh rate device or the you know, capable device, but you're still not playing with it. So even though I love my ROG Phone 2 and it has 120 hertz on it, I can tell you right now, none of the games I have on them run at 120. Uh, there is a few that I'm able to test and benchmark on them. Like I think Injustice 2 was running at 120. Um, but as far as Fortnite, PUBG, and so on, the best I'm able to get is 60. Uh, the optimization to go up to 90 was given to OnePlus devices, and I'm sure later on we'll see that. So it, there's still a need for that. And if if we're just thinking in that aspect, um, I would probably say from a future-proof, ROG Phone 3 is definitely going to be a better deal, or I would still probably say find a used ROG Phone 2. You're better off than both of those. Um, because you'll get 90% of the same features, the air triggers on the side, the large 6,000 milliampere battery, the headphone jack is on it. Um, and honestly, if the five, if the screen wasn't just literally busted, I would have shown you exactly what it looks like. You get the customizations with the Aura, uh, the colors, not the Aura, but the, um, the all the options that you get there with the cooling. I think ROG is definitely where it's at. Uh, Black Shark 3 is a good phone. The Pro is where it needs to be. I feel like the the triggers, the, the mecha mechanical buttons that we got on those were definitely very nice. So I would say if you have to go between the two that you offered, go with the 3 Pro. Um, if, the, if, again, unless you really need 144 hertz, uh, because I feel like, again, very few games are still using it right now. Uh, is there a point for upgrading from the original Galaxy Watch to the newest Galaxy Watch 3 if, if, it, if it's still... Oh, if you're not interested in the ECG or the blood pressure mo uh, monitor. Um, I think not really. No. Um, well, actually, I take that back. Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about the original Galaxy Watch, uh, the Gear S3 uh, front, uh, Frontier, right? So that was the first Galaxy Watch watch that they came out with. Um, unless you're talking about the, the actual Galaxy Watch. I think you're talking about the actual Galaxy Watch, which was the one after that. So no, from the Galaxy Watch to the Gear, uh, the Galaxy Watch 3, I probably don't think it's a big difference. I think you're still getting a big display, you're still getting the long battery life, and you still get that aesthetic look, that mechanical spinning function that you're getting on the watch itself, which give you that nice tactile feeling. Um, I like the the Active 2. I just feel like that whole digital thing just made it too small, and it felt like it didn't really look as what I was expecting a smartwatch to look. I wanted it to look a little bit more like a regular watch, and that spinning crown definitely looks better. So, no, honestly, I, not worth the the big upgrade. The, 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 the payment method is still the same. They still didn't bring back MST, so it's not like we're getting any bigger feature there. Um, and almost all the apps and all the watch faces will do the exact same uh, functions for you. And you're probably getting a little bit better battery life. That's another thing. Um, sorry, that was that one there. Uh, Zubair saying, hi. Um, I have a pre-order for the Note 20 Ultra white color. <laughs> Team white there, definitely very much. Um, I want to know, how is the white color compared to the bronze? So the big difference between the two is the fingerprint sensitivity. The bronze has more of a matte finish. It's uh, It feels more textured. And the white one is glass. So if you've ever, if you've ever had a Samsung device that had a glass back and you felt that glass backing, that's pretty much how the uh, the the white one looks. Uh, it's not that it's uh, a bad texture. It's just you lose that bronze functionality. So the mystic bronze, uh, it, you know, the uh, I would say the um, 
the coating that they added in there to give us the non-slip and the, the fingerprint resistant material is unfortunately not here. So there is a difference, uh, but I personally chose it because of the, black, uh, the white and silver color. They look really nice aesthetically. And of course, if you get the right case for it, it just, it's a unique color. Everybody's going for the bronze. I feel like I think Samsung loves the color and it looks great. Uh, for me, I always like to get either the black one, uh, generally just a very under understated, uh, you know, kind of color on the device. And mostly because I cased them. And lately I've been actually finding myself using more cases that are see-through to appreciate more. So um, I think you're going to like it. I don't think it's a, it's a problem, but there is a difference. So if you've, if you've gone to Best Buy, if you've gone to the store and you've seen it with uh, like, let's say a case on it there, uh, yeah, or you've seen the material on the, on the bronze one, uh, this one just is more typical of what Samsung phones have. Um, coincidentally, I do have links in the description below, by the way, guys, for everybody, if you are looking for those uh, the cases that I did a video for you guys last night, uh, all the case uh, links will be in the description below, specifically to some of these cases that are really good uh, first party cases for Samsung uh, from Samsung on Amazon. Uh, oh, here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Goran Petrovic. Hey, good. Hey, man. Welcome back. Welcome, man. Uh, good. The Pixel 4a. Uh, so yes. Um, so the Pixel 4a for me, I'm, I'm finishing up my video. I, it's finally available. So first and foremost, I don't know, that was the other thing that came up this week, which was really, really nice. Uh, uh, we saw that the Pixel 4a is finally available. It's now it's no longer like pre-available. You know, there was pre-sales before, and then there was like a shortage of availability. You can pick it up again. Also, uh, the Pixel Buds, which was a nice little... A nice little surprise. Uh, Google finally made available those additional colors that we saw at launch. Um, the Pixel Buds are, for me, some of the best options that we have on the market. I do understand and I acknowledge the fact of the connectivity issue. I'm not ignoring those issues. And this is something that I think uh, Google is still working on. Um, but from the functionality of just simplicity of using them with the Assistant, and that's something that as much as I enjoy using the Pixel Buds Live, I, I miss. I miss having the ability of asking for the assistant by name and it just answers me right away. I don't like necessarily using Bixby. Not that it's a bagged assistant. It's just not the, not the one that I integrate my, my whole experiences. So my office, my uh, automated stuff, all of those things work really good. But again, those new colors are available. Um, I'm not sure if the Verizon deal is still available where I was able to pick up because I picked up mine from Verizon for about like 35% off. And in, uh, as opposed to being like 170 bucks, it was like 135 bucks um, after tax, which was a really good deal. So if you want to check them out, those are going to be great. Um, and I think, oh, okay. So there's a few more uh, Inception. Joey, definitely, definitely. We're going to get there very soon. Um, Good morning for, from San Diego, playing some Doom Eternal. Ah, uh, Juan Salazar. Um, I was playing that yesterday. So um, quick quick, a little bit. Actually, I, did, I do want to mention this uh, mostly because I feel like this is something that a lot of us don't really talk about a lot. I recently decided to upgrade my PC uh, in, in the back. And um, the main issue behind that is, as you guys know, I got the new G9, been playing a lot of games. I'm editing a lot of my videos. So I switch over to editing my, my, my videos back to my desktop as opposed to my laptop. And I decided to go with a really nice upgrade. And I do want to say thank you very much to Kingston for hooking it up like big time. Not just hooking it up, but big time hooking it up. Um, and I'll give you guys a link for those, that, of course, in the description below. There's a video that's coming up on how to speed up my, my PC that I'm putting the pieces for it together. Uh, they sent me the KC2500 SSD. That's an M.2 SATA SSD, a two terabyte. And like one of the craziest, fastest SSDs or M.2 uh, drives that you can get. If you're not familiar with them, most PCs now, the newer PCs, have a an M.2 SSD option on there that give you the ability of using your boot drive. So that's the main hard drive that you use straight on the motherboard. So you don't have to actually use an external drive. This is crazy, crazy fast. And unfortunately, I don't have the numbers on it here, uh, but I can tell you that essentially it's... Um, it just it's 45 times faster than 7200 rpm let's just say this if you've used a regular ide uh direct or you know basically a connected hard drive and you know what a 7200 rpm and you know what a 10,000 rpm hard drive is this is 45 times faster um, and what they also did which was really really nice is they hooked it up with a 64 gig of uh, fury uh memory as well so i have two 64 gigs now which is really good especially for editing so I want to say a big shout out to them. If you haven't had a chance to, please check them out. I want to, uh, you know, they're helping us with the channel and a video for that is coming very, very soon. Uh, thank you for asking on that one, actually. Uh, and uh, playing Doom, obviously, is super, super enjoyable, uh, especially with the wide view. You get to see everything. That's just everything. And um, 
speaking also, I downloaded the, the uh, what's it called? The Microsoft Simulator 2020 this morning. So I'm getting it ready. It's, I didn't finish the download, but it said that it needed like a 92 gig download. So I'm waiting for that one to kind of finish up there. Uh, Goron, um, you Pixel fans, wait for the Pixel 4a XL and the 5. Uh, so I think the reality is, I think th there's going to be a little bit of a, a kind of an issue there, right, Goran? Because I feel like the Pixel 4a has is it's, it's such a big hit. I really feel very little, um, a very small number of people will go for the 4a uh, 5G or the, X, the, the other model of the 4a, um, as opposed to going for the 5 if they want to choose a different version. And I think it's because the 350 is such a sweet spot for the features that you get, for the functions that you're getting there, the Android 11 that will be coming out very soon for it. There's a lot of things to be said that the, the Pixel 4a will definitely do well. And I feel like the reason why they're putting the uh, the 4a 5g and the 5 together because they're closer than than we think they are but we'll have to see um matt is the rg phone 3 is not coming to the uk but still but that's still the phone i'm getting um so it is it is something that you want to keep in mind obviously the rg phone 3 is supposed to be coming out very very soon beginning of september if i'm not mistaken and um, it is actually going to have different versions. The, the, the lower end model is going to be about 799 euros. So it's going to be reasonably priced at, as far as an entry level. Uh, it is limited by the amount of RAM. And I think, uh, I don't think the functionalities are limited, but I think it's mostly on the RAM. Uh, and it may not include the, access the accessory, the fan with the microphone in there. Uh, not really a Pixel fan, but uh, but the best bang for the buck, uh, I'll, it'll be a, definitely a go-to. Absolutely, Sam, I think it's, from, from a standpoint of what you're getting for if you want to, let's so an example would be great. Let's say you want to get a phone for your daughter or your, you know, your wife or, you know, that just need a phone that just works well, does everything right. And of course has a great camera on it because we love to take pictures. Obviously a, a lot of us now, when we think of smartphones, we can't just think of them as just, you know, browsing and so on. They need to be able to give us decent pictures. If they don't provide us good pictures, that's going to just, I would say muddy the experience that we're getting with it. So it's something you want to always appreciate. The Pixel 4a just checks off all of those boxes. It's not the fastest little car, but it does the job right, and it gets you everywhere you want to go for the right price. So definitely, I'm with you on that one. Um, Goran is. Uh, it's pretty true that the Pixel 5 will be uh, will have a 3080 uh, milliampere battery. I can't believe that that would be true. A lot of those rumors are coming up right now. It's a little bit hard to confirm. The fact is. Android, or at least stock Android, when you take out all the extra bells and whistles that some of the OEMs put on their devices, and if the screen is still a 1080p display and we're not running a high refresh rate, it really doesn't have that big of a problem. The Pixel 4a may not have the best battery life, on the, for me at least, but it still carries me through the day. So at the end of the day, when you were looking at it, it still provides you the experience that you're expecting. You're not, get, you're not really getting that high demanding processors on it. You're not getting the high refresh rate displays. So yes, smaller batteries can still actually last you quite long when you also cap the, uh, the specifications on the device. So I, I would not necessarily rule it out yet. We will have to definitely check that out once the device is available available uh did you get a thread ripper not yet actually no um i've upgraded to the 3900x um ryzen so i'm happy that you still remember that i'm on team ryzen with that one um i went with the 3900x so i that's been running way over what i need and i'm not even over, over chronic in it and i'm running about one 4.1 4.2 gigahertz on it on average um, the SSD upgrade that I did with the hard drive literally just blew any kind of expectation. So I replaced my, my boot drive with the M.2, the, uh, the KC 2500 from Kingston really, really kick ass. Like it's about 199 bucks for the drive, but it worth every penny. Um, the, the speed comparisons that I was going between my, my standard, um, the boot drive that I had before, which I want to see is the OZ, the OZC drive. I, I don't actually take that back. It's hard to say, and I don't remember what it is when I have it on my desk. Uh, so I did have the OZC, the Toshiba OZC, the RD400, is, which is what I upgraded from. The transfer rate, the read and write between the two, and the fact that it is basically four times as big, because that was a 500 gigabytes, and the new one is a two terabyte uh, drive. So first and foremost, absolutely fantastic. When you compensate for the, the different components, whenever you want to upgrade speed on your PC, uh, there's a general rule of, there's a few things you can do to speed up your PC, right? Um, you can change your PC CPU. That's one way. That's generally the most, uh, most cumbersome process to do because you have to change the motherboard. Sometimes you have to change the cooler. There's a whole different combination of things going on. And that becomes another project because when you change the motherboard, there's a whole bunch of things that go with it, uh, especially the IO, the cooling and all of that stuff. 
Um, the other option you can do is changing RAM. So either increasing the amount of RAM. The RAM essentially is, I like to describe it as the playground of all your programs when they're running. So whenever you run a program, it runs in RAM, right? Randomly access memory. And essentially, the more RAM you have and the faster the RAM you have, uh, that you have, it'll enable you to run things faster. It will see, obviously, uh, gaming will run faster and all the things will run really good. And of course, if you ever run device applications like Premiere, uh, After Effects, um, Illustrator, Photoshop, those are RAM guzzling apps. Absolutely. Um, when I'm running uh, After Effects to run some of my renders uh, a couple of times in there, I've gone up all the way up to 32 gig, uh, 32 gigs of out of my 60, uh, sorry, out of my 64 gigs used in the middle of that render and me being inside of Adobe at the same time. So when you're running Adobe Suites, it's going to eat up RAM. And if you love using Chrome, it's going to eat up RAM. Um, so RAM is another way. And of course, your hard drive is another option that you can do. Speeding up your hard drive, the ability of reading and re um, reading and writing information on the drive always improves the performance on your PC. So for me, I couldn't, I didn't want to change my CPU. The 3900X is still a capable processor. I picked that up, uh, I think it was in the middle of last year. Um, and I'm really loving that. I felt like the SSD was a thing that I should have gone a little bit more on when I was first upgrading and I decided to save a little bit of money because I was putting the build together. It wasn't really hitting all the numbers for me. Uh, and I felt like the SSD is the one I decided to, to cheapen up on a little bit. Again, you have to keep in mind, it's a, it's a budget, right? I mean, the, the CPU, the GPU are generally the things that are going to kill you. And everything else, you try to kind of find the right combo. So for me, this was a really good upgrade. Uh, the RAM, I decided at the beginning, I only ran with uh, 16 gigs. And then later on, and what I was running back in the day was the uh, the Fury, no, not the Fury, the, the Flare X by G-Skill. So I ran two of these, two eights, and then that gave me 16 gigs. And that was running fine. And then I upgraded to 32 by running four, so dual channel memory. Um, and that was running really good. But I realized that I was starting to hit the plateau with you know, Ele you know Adobe and all the different suites there. Short answer, long story short, it's humming. It's humming. It's definitely humming. Uh, let me real quick and see if we missed anything. Uh, oh, Gregory. Uh, I don't, <laughs> man, dude, don't worry. Yes, no, definitely. Let me see what we have here. Matt, uh, upgrades mean you won't die as much on plunders. <laughs> So Matt, Matt and Sam and I got a chance to put in a game. We figured out we the, the biggest challenge we had at that the entire night, honestly, though, was getting us to basically find each other on uh, uh, on Blizzard or Activision, depending on. I think you guys are on. Um, I think I think both Matt and Sam were running on PlayStation's, and I'm running on PC. There was a. It's a little bit complicated to find each other, but once you have each other as friends, you're able to add them and start playing. We played a couple of games of Plunder, and you're right. Um, for me, it's all about getting the process oh and i also did buy the game by the way after we talked on that i decided to play uh, the buy the game mostly because of the multiplayer function and some of the options that you get there uh and it was on sale for like 39 bucks it was it was really hard for me to mess um before i go too far i do i, I do want to mention one thing i don't think actually i did post it yet the uh xperia one mark ii or the xperia one ii is back in the house and not only is it back in the house, but it is screaming fast. I miss this guy. I miss it. I miss it so much. I got a purple case on it. Uh, it kind of looks blue for you guys, but it's a little bit more purplish here. Uh, and I'm really happy to see it. But um, as far as the PC upgrades, absolutely. Anytime I do anything on the PC, uh, it it needs to it needs to serve dual purpose, right? Uh, it's a working machine for me. At number one, it's a working machine. I play games on it, which is always a fun thing to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, as long as it runs smoothly through my render and it edits my 4K, my 5, my 8K footage, uh, or even produces my 1080p, 60, 30, all the different formats that I like to do, at, at basically I would say at time, meaning a 10 minute timeline in 10 minutes or less, those are the things I'm trying to do, and I will always try to optimize to get that best experience. Um, all phones slow down over time, but nothing, uh, but nothing dramatically. Absolutely. Goran, I think is, is true. Uh, there's not much we can actually say about Android or any other operating system other than the fact that it is, yes, slowdowns are inevitable. Um, it may be a situation where you're being throttled in certain situation with different manufacturers, but at the end of the day, yes, uh, our devices build up cash, uh, the hard drive, obviously the, the battery gets degraded over time. The ecosystem obviously isn't intended to stay super fast for a very long time. The one thing I will say is um, OnePlus devices, as well as Google devices, over time age better than other manufacturers. I feel like the optimizations that are done with more of a stock Android experience, especially on Pixel devices, uh, tend to provide you a much easier, simpler process. There's not much added to it to slow it down as much. Uh, so a Pixel will probably age much better than, a, let's say, a Samsung device. 
Not to say that it won't do well, but I feel like always with Samsung, whenever we upgrade, especially Android versions, um, they don't run as snappy as they did the first time. I feel like there's always that little bit of a difference. And I think it's either an optimization because they're not their primary source of the target of the new operating system. So they take a little bit longer to get them out. Uh, like the, right now, we'll probably see the Note 20, the Note 20 Ultra, and the S20 line of devices getting the, the brand new Android 11 when it comes out in about a month or so. Or the beta, at least, I think is starting to come out with the S20 right now, the S20 Ultras. Um, so those are things you want to keep in mind. I feel like those are going to be great. But again, you know, once you start getting updates on other devices, how has that experience been for you? Especially, you know, I think I, one of the gentlemen in the comments were talking about the S9 Plus. That's an older device that has received a couple of updates. It still runs fine, but I feel like not as fast as when it first came out, which uh, it's not that's not a bad thing, but just something to expect. Uh, upgrade means, <laughs> no, no, definitely. So I think I'm, I'm starting to I'm rolling back. Um, what do you prefer playing um, Sony? Oh, what's he playing? Uh, the Sony Mark One II uh, from the US, or make a Moto Edge um, locally? So I, I live in. Uh, okay, uh, what would you prefer uh, paying? Sony One Mark uh, Mark Two from the US, or take a Moto Edge? Oh, I I would still go with the Sony. I would still go, in, and I probably would say get the Sony from New Europe. Don't even get it from the U.S. Uh, it, it may be a little bit cheaper for it to ship for you, um, as the U.S. model will probably come with more taxes. And in Europe, if you're buying it internationally, they generally exclude the taxes for you. In the U.S., it doesn't matter where you're buying it, as long as it has to ship because it ships to the U.S., uh, there's like at least a couple of hundred dollar taxes in there. So I, I would, yeah, um, I think the Mark II definitely has a lot to offer the Android up the Android installation here is so so is almost basic just down to the elements that you need um, the call screening from Google is in here uh, mm -hmm. you get some really nice applications the gallery app actually did get brought back into it which was something that was nice since I first review it that was one of my concerns uh, and we now have raw support for phot photography directly in the camera so if you have that this definitely is great um, so I would definitely would recommend that for especially if you love photography and video uh, they do have a lot of good things. And the headphone jack is very nice. Um, oh, sorry. The next one here is Samsung's wireless decks on Samsung S7 Plus cool on Samsung 4K UHD 40. And <laughs> um, it would be, yes, no, definitely. The S7 Plus cool on Samsung 4K UHD. I think the, the output is going to always be limited by how you're using it. If you're using wireless decks, it's limited to 1080p 30. There's not much we could do other than that. Um, higher refresh rate, obviously, we'll need to have higher displays. And this is something that we've seen in the past as well from standard wired uh, Samsung devices. Uh, you just need to have a display that is part of the resolution that they support. And I'm pretty sure Samsung displays are going to be on that list. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator is huge. Absolutely, Gary. I so I'm, I'm a fan of the simulator, uh, you know, the saga. And I, I haven't played it for the last couple of years. But a buddy of mine... Um, uh, man, I, I don't know why the name is uh, is keeping me right now, but he hit me up a couple of weeks ago and he was basically telling me, hey, I saw that you got the G9, how you like it? I, I told him exactly how much I feel, uh, how much I like it. And then he said, um, make sure you play the flight simulator. And it was just right about where the flight sim hasn't released it. So it just released a couple of days ago. Um, so I downloaded it this morning and the initial uh, release or the initial download from Steam was like maybe 50, 500 megs. And I was like five, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm like, this is not right. That was the setup file. <laughs> the setup file was there. Once you went through the installation and got everything set up, uh, and I'm happy to say, obviously, with the setup and the upgrades that I've done in here, I have maxed everything. All the resolution, uh, ultra. I'm, I'm playing it on ultra, and the graphics are crazy good. Um, but I didn't get a chance to play more than literally maybe five minutes into it because it was it, it took an hour and a half for it to finish the download and then, of course, finishing the install. And I had to leave the PC and do a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll be playing that a little bit later on today. But yeah, big fan of uh, Flight Simulator. And I, I want to be able to check out some of the new airports and the new flights and the the the, uh, the realism in that, in that actual uh, app. I played it back in the day when Flight Simulator literally looked like a game of uh, like a just blockiness, uh, very choppy. And this flight simulator is just a classic. It's been on as a franchise forever. So if you've never tried it, definitely check it out and check out some of those videos. Um, use the Samsung S7 Plus or the Samsung uh, Tab S7 Plus uh, display as a trackpad. <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine doing that? Like you set it up there and you have this massive tra trackpad sitting in front of you and that's like your whole thing and you, you do... Uh, I, I will definitely check that out. I think the Tab S the Tab S7 Plus is really more intended to be to give us that um, 
that laptop experience on a tablet. And I think that's the main main thing that they're shooting for. I personally think that this is something that you probably can do with it, but you think you could probably do a lot more with the Note than you can do with the Tab S7 Plus. I feel like right now, if you need a tablet and you need a tablet that does a lot of work, so you want to be able to use it like a small PC, the Tab S7 Plus is going to be the one to go for, especially with the high refresh rate, the fact that of all the functionalities, especially with DeX, I think this is definitely going to be really nice. Uh, and you're able to actually trade in some of your early generations of Samsung tablets. They're taking tablet trade-ins, which is really cool. They did the same thing with the watches, with the S7, uh, the Galaxy Watch, S3, the Galaxy Watch 3, um, and they're giving you actually uh, the ability of trading in some some of your older tech. Most companies don't usually do that, and that's I feel like this is something that we need to appreciate. Um, all, all the way from India due to the pandemic, all the Chinese brands and apps people have hated uh, and Samsung have a huge market for flagship phones, open ours for Samsung. And what, what is your opinion on that one? Um, I think so without getting too much into a political situation, because that isn't really part of what, what we can comment on. I can say this much. It's definitely creating a void, which means it is a, a ripe situation for a company like Samsung to jump in and try to make bank. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, they need to kind of bring in more support for those mid-range devices. Flagships are great, but they tend to be really, really high priced. And I feel like their M series and the A series of Samsung devices need to basically step it up a little bit and give you better options, especially in the Indian market, uh, to be able to capitalize on that on those features. Um, at some point or another, though, the situation is going to have to regulate itself, and at some point, we'll we'll have to figure out what's going on. And I think even companies that have operated in the past and that do have some concerns are going to do a, some kind of shifting, pivoting in the actual market, and adapting to the new system. So I wouldn't necessarily rule them out, but definitely a good opportunity for Samsung to swoop in. I would say, I, I, I like I like the idea that you're you're looking at it from different angles. Uh, depends on the update quality, uh, but most can be corrected. Google is sometimes too fast and careless. Uh, I'd say pixels are not worse than others in that way. Uh, I, I think what you're referring to with that one, Goran, is that you're thinking is that, yes, they're too fast to release an update, and sometimes they break what they're trying to update, and I'm with you with that. Uh, they, they tend to have a little bit more we'll fix it in post kind of an approach, but I feel like this is, I think this is, Microsoft started this a long time ago with their Microsoft Windows update. You would receive a brand new version of Windows and there's always problems and you know it's always a patch update after patch update. Um, Google's getting better, but they do, yes, they, they still have some times where they release an update and the first thing you'll start hearing about it on the market or from a lot of people is like, you know, uh, my pixel is not turning on and certain things are not working or battery life is starting to go down the, you know, down the tubes. Those are things that I think should have been tested. And of course, um, what they used to call like soak testing before they released them. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think just from a longevity of usability and function, the fact that we get a lot of updates and a lot of improvements with very little added upon the actual OS and what you're getting directly from Google uh, still provides a somewhat of a smoother experience. Uh, not always the best, but again, you know, when you start looking at track records, um, I would say they're, they're, they, they fare pretty easily, pretty nicely, actually. Um, let me see here. Oh, so I think we're there. Gary's back in the, uh, I installed it on my pixel 4a about three weeks ago and no regrets. Um, I think he's talking. Okay. So he's responding back to that one. Um, what's your takes on the one plus, uh, on the web plus, uh, okay. One plus changing the oxygen OS into something more like one UI. Um, so for that one, Aditya, I would probably say is uh, this is just a pivot, right? Th this is something that we've seen over the years. Uh, one plus needs to they're trying to break out. They're trying to be more of that flagship. Now, the UI elements that we've seen here are definitely very conducive to one-handed operation. My hope is that um, it, it's it's hard for us to basically say that it doesn't look like one UI because it does kind of look like one UI. It pretty much looks like uh, they, they basically took a lot of inspiration from it. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like this is still the first version of Oxygen OS. And I think the reason why they released it this way, they wanted people to see it and they wanted to see the response. If people don't make their voice heard on social media and responses and so on, uh, I think OnePlus will take that as this is a good way to go and they're going to move forward with it. And I feel like the best way to do it is if we're not happy with it, we should vocalize it. For me right now, it it didn't really stand out so much for me to be such a big concern. I think my biggest thing would be is once once Oxygen OS 11 comes out, I needed to stay on the same path, which is what the earlier generations of uh, Oxygen OS have been, and that means the ability of staying fast, uh, the ability of staying consistently smooth, and always getting the updates that we want and keeping that beta channel running. Those are the things that I appreciated the most about OnePlus. 
And having the settings tab change a little bit and becoming more one-handed, I think that's at the end of the day, as a user, it could help them. And again, if you if you don't personally prefer it a lot, we don't spend all that day, all that all that much time in the settings tab. I think the overall experience on the the launcher, the gestures, the sim, the simplicity of the UI, and of course the speed is what needs to stay. Um, I'm not against it. At the end of the day, I think it's uh, OnePlus is very much a reactive company when it comes to comments from their users. And if people don't like it, believe me, OnePlus will take it out. And OnePlus will, will change gears and will go back and give us what the earlier version of the UI elements. Uh, I think the improvements in the apps are definitely nice. Um, then a couple of new video features that I saw in the camera app on the OnePlus 8, which is the, uh, I think was it the Nightscape video, and then the ability of using that vo bokeh video or the portrait video. Those are nice options. I'd love to see them. And I definitely want to see more functions coming in there. Um, David Burns, I'm super happy. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a great system. Absolutely, man. No, dude. Uh, I there's very few things that you can do like i said when you do them and they do and they come out really really easily and what i really liked about it also is the uh kingston one came with a copy of a chronos um true image which really made the transfer so much easier so the only thing i would say my only hiccup in the entire process is i got my m.2 sata uh, the m.2 drive and uh, the usb the the adapter that i'm using right now this little adapter i had an earlier version of it that i've used with an earlier drive didn't work with the new case uh, the kc2500 so i had to wait a couple of days to get another option once i had that upgraded it and it was crazy fast very very simple again 64 gigs uh, is for me the, the the right standard because like i said when i'm using after effects i'm rendering and i'm in after effect working on my next project because i work as you guys know i produce videos for arabic and an english channel so i generally will be um working in after effects producing one uh, one one basically uh, one video directly out of it like uh, the pieces that i need and i'm working in the next one for the next language because they're two separate files so as i'm running there on average i, I literally i hit about 50 percent of my uh, my ram and that's 32 gigs and if i don't have enough rams if you're running a system on 32 that could slow things dramatically down not only from the performance also from the rendering time and all of that stuff when you're trying to when you're working on a schedule is always going to have a hit so you always want to be right with that goron uh so matt tyler which one oh, okay so uh goron's asking matt which one has the best speaks on a smartphone hint it's not the rog phone 3 um also uh it, it does it doesn't have 2.5 millimeter headphone, uh, headphone jack um i'll let matt answer that one i think it's the rog phone 2 my friend yeah no definitely uh i that's one of the reasons why i love it it's just it checked off a lot of boxes for gaming and it still works great in 2022 uh, 2020 um, and it'll carry us really well till next year <laughs> so goron is saying close but no okay we're playing the guessing game supposedly ah the mi 10 pro real speakers on on both sides so i'm with you on that one goron my only issue my only little beef with the mi 10 pro is that the speakers are facing sideways that's my only thing. So when you're holding the phone, yeah, they have to kind of like, um, almost like they have to echo or bounce off your arm to actually get to you. Th the reason why I think the ROG Phone 2 is a little bit better is mostly because of the facing of the speakers. When the speakers face you, they're definitely gonna give you a little bit of better experience. Not to say that the Mi 10 Pro are not great. I agree that the Mi 10 Pro has great speakers. Uh, they absolutely are fantastic, loud, bassy, and all of them. But I feel like the whole sideways facing on a phone that is always intended to be facing us, that was my only uh, my only reason. One, one of the reasons why I didn't mention that one right away. But I, I'm with you, definitely. They sound really good. Um, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> was a blast. Def oh, man, let's check it out real quick, Gary. Uh, oh, where are we here? Okay. Pure Android is the best way of going Android. Absolutely. And, and I do want to say this, that I think a lot of us... Uh, <laughs> spend more time respawning than playing i um, mean i think so um plunder if you guys are not familiar with call of duty there's a there's, a, there's a, a game inside of call of duty warzone called plunder plunder is a fun game to play because uh, it's not a situation where you have to worry if you get killed you're, you're out of the game you're basically respawn as literally within like a certain amount of time you're roughly about at 30 seconds 30 to 35 seconds uh from being basically back into the game where you were before um and I think Sam and Matt and I were, were really having a lot of fun. We played a couple of times. I died a couple of times, actually. Uh, but it was a good, it's a great co-op game. If you want to play with some friends, uh, you want to just uh, release some some of that uh, frustration, some of that exhaustion that you have all day and just disconnect and have fun. I feel like it's a great game. Uh, obviously, age appropriate if you can. Obviously, I don't recommend this for younger generations uh, unless you're, you know, you're 
comfortable with it or your parents are. But I think at the end of the day, what I would say is it, it was a lot of fun to just hang out with Matt and Sam and just kick it uh, and just literally like as if we were in the same room across the country. So we got West Coast, East Coast, UK, everybody was happy. Um, the Samsung, so um, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S Plus, uh, the Galaxy 7 Plus is the best tablet with one UI 2.5 better than the iPad, any iPad. Um, I think it's a hard sell at this point, mostly because we haven't seen basically, you know, like the, the use cases, the true use cases in school and in, in, uh, in basically different functions and so on. iPad has a very good, uh, well integrated system of uh, basically applications and so on that work great on the iPad. There, we can't really knock the systems down. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's depending on what you're comfortable with. If you're more of an Android user, I feel like this is the best Android tablet you can get. There's no question about it. Is it better than the iPad? It's going to be a little bit of a toss up um, based on what you use. And at the end of the day, I think they're both going to give you a great experience. Definitely a cheaper uh, in the long run, if you think about it. The Tab S7 Plus, I think it's going to be a really good. The refresh rate is really good. Uh, the fingerprint sensor, the display, the touch response, uh, the pen is very nicely tucked in in the back, magnetically held. Uh, and if you do end up picking up the accessory for it, the keyboard, which will obviously make it work and basically look a little bit more like a laptop, that's going to be a great option to check it out as well. Uh, that's the a team rumble in Fortnite. Uh, it's all fun, and and you respawn as uh, yeah, right after you die. No, exactly. Yeah, it, it, every game generally have it. It's multiplayers or battle, battle royale type games um, always have this uh, function. It's it's great for just basically you know go back at it, go back at it, go back at it. Um, I was playing a match yesterday um, in Plunder by myself. I was just playing Plunder by myself. And there was this one dude I was playing against. And um, we were at the train station. I was playing around with him. And then he he took me out, right? And um, and I just respawned. And then, of course, this because of Plunder the way it is, and when you're playing by yourself, you don't respawn in different spots where your teammates are. You just generally respawn roughly where you died. So I kept respawning, coming down, taking him out. He comes respawning, coming down, taking me out. It was we We went at it for about 10 minutes. And then at some point, I think I lost track of him. But then there was like a, a downed helicopter. There was a cash drop and I saw somebody else coming in there. So I went in there, um, dropped on this one dude and I thought I got him, but then he took me out. And then I did the same thing. I kind of respawned and came back down, took him out, got the money and got 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 myself out of that train station fast just so that I, I didn't want that cycle to keep going. But it's a fun game. It's a fun game. I Absolutely, I'd say it's a fun game. And like I said, um, an amazing time waster. <laughs> Time flies when you're in there. Uh, like I've never felt 25 minutes a game fly faster than this. And it's just crazy. Um, I'll question Saf on Monday about his uh, questionable RPG firing skills. Uh, don't know uh, if John Redinger plays or not. So yes, uh, Matt is uh, very subtly, very, very subtle uh, uh, dropping names in here. So the show on Monday is going to be uh, with Sam and Matt. And it's going to be, as I mentioned, so this week only, it's going to be moving to Monday. Um, they're going to have uh, John Redinger as well as Super Saf on the show. Super Saf, as you guys know, was with us here a few weeks ago, uh, specifically actually when we talked about the Xperia 1 Mark II. Uh, and John Redinger, actually, I wouldn't mind at some point uh, connecting with him. He actually is... I want to say about an hour or so away from where I am in uh, in Los Angeles. So it's uh, not far and I would love to be able to have him on the show at some point. So, but I am looking forward to checking it out. Uh, check them out again across the podcast. It'll be on Monday this uh, next week, not tomorrow. And this uh, only for this show. Uh, and uh, Saf, I played actually a couple of games of Plunder with Saf as well. Uh, he actually plays pretty late too, like around 12 or 1 a.m. in the morning, uh, UK time. And, you know, he logs on and we play a couple of games and, it's fun. It's it's a great way, like I said, hang out with your friends, talk, and and kick back. It's a it's like a, you know the good old days of just playing games in the same room, but we don't have those. Um, Gary the fireman is uh, my Razer phone two is ninety nine percent for Fortnite, and it's still a great phone. Exactly. No, it's there's a game. There's there are certain game phone. There are certain phones that are meant for these type of things. You know the Razer phone two, which I really I'm sad not to see that the, there's no three or there's not going to be a sequel to that one. Uh, but those are type of devices that you enjoy. A large 120 frames refresh rate, uh, really good speakers, uh, Dolby support, and of course, just all of the things that you want. Um, I think for me, Gary, the only thing that made me go with the RG2 as opposed to the the uh, to stick with the uh, the Razer 2 was the fact that they lost the headphone jack and I had to use the adapter. Not to say that the adapter wasn't great and they provided us a really good DAC built into it. Um, but I just like that. That was my my thing at the time. And I still, I think, have somewhere my Razer phone, too. I just I may need to dig that one up as well. Um, 
Google Android is is what Google do. Uh, but what Android is, what Google really wants Android to be is Samsung One UI beta test features that Samsung yet early act gets early access to already have an Android line. Um, I, I want to say yes and no. I, I want to say that it's a, it's a little bit of a, a goes both ways, right? So yes, I agree. I think Google would prefer to have what Samsung has as far as the UI. Obviously, they take some of their features. The dual screen, the, not the dual screen, the multi-window function that we have within Android today that we we all use on our devices was the Samsung unique feature that Samsung had a long time ago. I'm with you. They incorporated, they brought it in, and it now becomes the standard. Nobody has to have to code that in separately or develop that over. Um, I feel like at the end of the day, what we haven't really noticed when a lot of people are talking is that if you notice that companies are able to start releasing more and more uh, betas of Android, right? So Android 11 as a, as a Android R, uh, we've seen um, Oppo release their beta. We saw OnePlus release their beta. We saw Xiaomi releasing their beta. We know Samsung is releasing, the, uh, they're working on their beta for the S20 line. So a lot of OEMs are actually working on the version of Android now and improving it or getting it ready for launch closer to when you know Google releases it. So Google will always get that, you know, we got it first kind of thing. Um, yes, to a certain point, I think Google will always benefit from having other OEMs do in their implementation, and then they get to pick what they like and incorporate it into the into basically the Android the AOSP code. Uh, but I think what we know, what we are lacking yet is the cohesiveness of the development of features. Uh, like the development of features every year, like last year we had the Soli chip with uh, with, uh, with the Pixel 4 XL. And I felt like that I, that should have been the, the, you know, the trend moving forward. And from the leaks that we're seeing right now is there's no Soli chip there. It doesn't look like they're gonna progress with that. There's a lot of little one-offs there. And we're, while Samsung does end up trying to experiment a little bit, they're more consistent in their in their development. So my goal is for for Google to kind of just follow that same trend, uh, build on what they have, improve things, and give us things that we want. Uh, and of course, uh, if they do find some things that work, continue with that and go with that. And again, I hope we get wide-angle lenses on Google devices at some point. If anything, I know it sounds like a weird one, but. Uh, Oh man, Juan Carlos, my buddy, my friend, my homie from another town. Um, he he lives even closer than uh, John Rettinger. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, the Razer. I'm I'm really sad to see the Razer line kind of just die, especially because Razer as a company didn't really stop being a Razer gaming kind of centric. So gaming for Razer is still a big thing. Mobile gaming, I feel like, is something that is big, and we can see now that. From when the first Razer phone came out to the Razer phone 2 and when the ROG came in here, we're seeing so many more phones that are jumping into the gaming spec. I mean, Red Magic is not becoming a name into this as a lot of people know what Red Magic does and what Red Magic offers us, obviously. So you have Red Magic, you have the Black Shark, uh, you also have obviously the different brands that come in with gaming phones. Uh, they need to come back and they need to claim the throne. But at the end of the day, it's some it's kind of a like it's a numbers thing, really, right? Uh, I feel like they didn't focus so much on it, and we saw how the development and the upgrades on the uh, Razer Phone 2 were kind of a little bit staggering. And then, of course, we heard the news. Maybe it'll come back, maybe it won't. At this point, I think ROG is going to have to carry us for a while, at least in the U.S., uh, with Black Shark and some of the other guy. Um, uh, some, lurk <laughs> some lurking guy uh, is back. Mr. Juan Carlos Bagnell is the infamous chat ch uh, check. <laughs> <laughs> JC is in the comments, man. No, I appreciate it, man. Big fan, of love from India. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Um, oh, so many, a lot of potential. Obviously, speaking about Fortnite, what what's your take on Apple versus Epic? Um, that's a money thing. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's purely a money thing. At the end of the day, Fortnite or Epic charging seven ninety nine for ten for basically what normally we would pay ten dollars for um, on the Google Play Store or on uh, directly through Apple. It's pretty much just telling you how much of a take Apple and Google take into, into it. Um, Fortnite did quite well for the longest time without being on the Google Play Store, and then within that short lived span of being on the Google Play Store, are they're off again and they're going direct into the users. Um, I think Fortnite has enough of a clout right now and enough a user base and people know about it. Uh, their biggest concern that they need to do, obviously, is Apple because of the sideloading functionalities and getting their app on iPhones. That is going to be a harder thing to do when you don't have it on the App Store. Android has never been a problem. I think, again, we sideloaded the installer. Uh, and the other thing, kind of coincidentally, um, Samsung still carries the installer on their on their App Store. So 
Third-party app stores are still supporting Fortnite as an installer, not an issue. Uh, and I'm wondering if there is no, uh, if there is still a money exchange situation going on, or if this is basically purely just, hey man, you can't be on the other big guys. You can come over and hang out with us, kind of stuff. Uh, but um, at the end of the day, honestly, I, on Android, it doesn't really impact us much. It's never really being a problem for Apple. Some concession is going to have to be done. I don't know if Apple is um, it will necessarily have a benefit or a loss. Like I don't think people go for iPhones because they think they're the best gaming phones. I think at the end of the day, um, people will probably be just migrate off. I mean, if they can't come to a resolution, Apple will still make the money. I don't think they're going to lose money. Um, it's literally more about what Epic wants to do and how much they're willing to concede. And the question would be, is it, will they fix things with Apple and let Google sit where it is, or would they just fix things with everybody? That's that's really what I'm looking forward to seeing on that one. Um, so the S10 Plus or the OnePlus 8, oh, the S10 Plus or the OnePlus 8, which one would, uh, would be worth uh, buying right now? Um, if you like a headphone jack, and um, I feel like the cameras on the OnePlus, um, actually, I think I'll, I'll bring it down purely to the, so the S10 Plus still has a headphone jack. Um, it has a large display. You have the uh, nice cameras on, the, I think it didn't have the, uh, actually, take that back. So that one did have the dual cameras on the front. You have the triple cameras on the back. You have the wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, headphone jack, a lot of good things. I think the S10 Plus is still a good deal. Um, if you're wanting to get something that has 5G on it, I think obviously then I would say the 8 would probably edge off a little bit on that one. That would be my thing on it, uh, mostly because uh, the 8, the only two things that I say the 8 has as a, over the S10 Plus is 5G and a 90 hertz refresh rate. That's about the thing, because they both have the curved display uh, and the camera's uh, prowess there. Um, I hear about promote you back to head. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are still going back with that. Um, you get better every week, every week, Donald. Uh, appreciate it, bro. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. No, always. Uh, the one plus eight. So Greg all will always say the great. Yeah. So like I said, it depends on the pre personal preference. I say this is, like I said, some people like to make sure that they're doing future proofing, getting that 5G uh, tech into their phones. Uh, I think the S10 Plus is a great phone. And specifically, um, the phone that I did trade in to actually get uh, somewhat of a small discount on my uh, Note 20 Ultra was the S10 Plus. I did have that one, and I did want it to trade that in. So it's still good. Uh, in 2020, you can probably find a good, reasonably priced one unlocked on Amazon for about 450 430 Really good deal. Very, very good. Uh, and then of course the one plus eight is seven ninety nine, starting on of seven uh, six six ninety nine. Sorry, six ninety nine for the starting price there. The S ten E is one of the best value for the money right now from last year's phones. Absolutely, uh, you got the best of the, uh, the features. The S ten, uh, the S sorry, the Snapdragon eight fifty five. Now you got a ten eighty p panel, not a, uh, obviously not a QHD, but you still got some of the best features: sound mounted fingerprint sensor, uh, triple camera setup on the back, single camera on the front, four K, uh, of course, all the nice bells and whistles. Um, and the form factor was always unique. Like if you've wanted a phone that was slightly smaller, but gave you some of the main features of the S10, the S10 Plus, the S10e is definitely one of the nice ones. And I feel like the Nord is trying to jump into that little realm now since Samsung that kind of discontinued the E model. We didn't see it with the S20 this year. And uh, the light models that they did release were not smaller devices, were actually big displays, definitely. Um, Hamad Nasir says, Galaxy Fold or Note 20 Ultra? Ooh. If you had to choose one, which which one would you go for? Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's gonna be the Note uh, the uh, the Galaxy Fold Two. Um, I I really liked. So from the things that I've seen, um, they fixed the problem that the one problem I had. Now I'm taking price out of the equation because I realize there's also about a thousand dollar difference in price between the two. That has to be something that you're willing to to accept. So first and foremost, if we take price out of it, um, the out the outside display of the phone is exactly what I was expecting the phone to be when it's closed. Uh, they have 120 hertz refresh rate uh, resolution, the adaptive refresh rate that they were talking about, the improvements over the, uh, the hinge mechanism, there's something still to be proven. But the fact is that I can actually use the phone closed as good as if I'm using my normal note without the pen. And then of course, opening it up gets me the tablet. I feel like the, the Z Fold 2 is definitely gonna be the phone to, to keep an eye out for. Um, Although from a powerhouse standpoint, I feel like the, the pen input will always be the S Pen uh, functionality because the Fold will not use it. So if I had to choose between the two, if I if the pen is not a concern and the price, of course, I think the Z Fold 2 is a great uh, great phone to look out for. Uh, we'll learn more by September 1st when the pre-sales come on. 
Uh, but from what I've seen with the leaks and the hands-on, uh, it's absolutely what I was looking for from the first generation. And I tried that phone twice and both times I had a hard time selling it both. Um, you could, uh, you could maybe look around and find a G8 for uh, for a steal uh, for that price. Absolutely. No, no, no. Uh, don't get me wrong. LG makes a lot of different options as well. The price point, the G8 is great, definitely. But LG is notorious for geographical restrictions, which is another thing. Uh, the same G8 sold in one country may not be the same G8 sold in another. Uh, the G8 is pretty good, too. Uh, pretty good, but uh, pretty good but as well. Uh, but you know... Oh, so yeah, you'll know, you would have known it if you were going for an LG. So absolutely, if you're an LG, I'm not going to say if you're an LG fan, but if you appreciate what LG brings to the table as far as offerings, and when you look at the hardware, absolutely. I think that the V60, the Velvet, the G8, or even the G8X uh, that came out later in the year with the secondary screen option with the case, those are things that you have to appreciate what LG brings in. Hardware was never a problem on LG. It's never been a challenge. I think what they need to do is step it up a little bit on their software department and provide us more consistent upgrades. I think that's what most LG users will, uh, will definitely appreciate. But, um, point back now, it's slowly spreading. Um, I'm I'm chilling for LG, <laughs> LG as well. No, absolutely, uh, Aditya. Which is it is like I said, they've been around, and I'm glad they're still playing the game. I'm I'm glad they're still going there. Uh, some LG chill guy. I I think that describes quite a few of us. <laughs> quite a few, Aditya. Oh man, you guys are just kicking it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, oh, Greg is saying Team Pixel Pixel 4a. Absolutely, guys. No, um, and. Surprisingly, not that long ago, if you guys saw it on my Instagram or even on Twitter, I posted that picture of Team Pixel. They did that uh, the ice cream uh, challenge they did, and um, believe it or not, my picture that I posted the uh, the ice cream challenge, the ice cream mug challenge for August, uh, what's it August now for July, uh, won I, I won a Nest Hub Max. And that was actually a really cool little surprise. Uh, so I was very happy, very very nice, and uh, absolutely, man, Pixels great pictures, hands down. You know, for an auto mode experience, picture take picture taking. Pixels are it. Uh, and most of us that don't want to play with the settings, that's going to basically per work perfectly for you. But if you want to be able to play with the settings, you want to be able to open up the camera and jump into that professional camera application that just literally screams at you and says, basically, this is a Sony Alpha experience coming into you as smartphone. Then I think, uh, you know, Sony's your guy. Uh, Sony and, and uh, LG, I think, are doing really, really good. Um, so tech pimp is uh i say so it went for the ultra i don't think the fold is uh is ready yet for prime time but we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely say, we'll have to see enough though um i went with the ultra as well like i said the uh, the overall preference for me on the fold has always been the form factor um, when you use it for a certain amount of time and i used the first fold for about a month and a half I, uh, before i sold it um I have to say, you get to appreciate the real estate, the ability, like you know, you know when you were working on it. The, the only thing that drove me crazy was the fact that I always had to open the fold to use the phone. The front-facing panel, the display on the first fold was just absolutely wrong in, in on the size, wrong in the resolution, wrong in the functionality. The UI, they used the same UI as the internal screen, which made it very much small and very hard to type in. And it felt like you just paid a lot of money for a small phone. Unless that was the intention, it's, that's not what people really go for. But uh, that was some of my limitations there. And I felt like also the the first generation, the issues, the recalls, and the whole bunch of things going on, and the delay in the release as well. Um, I agree. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, that you know all of this is uh, you know vaporware kind of thing. If you think about it, you know, till we actually have a hardware in hand in the store to check out, it's hard to tell. Uh, but for what I've seen, at least, if nothing else, the size of the external display fixes the biggest problem. A It'll actually reduce the number of times you have to use the phone in open form, meaning you don't have to open it up all the time, reducing the wear and tear on the actual mechanism, which also kind of extend the battery, the, the longevity of the actual mechanism. B, we also see that there's going to be 120 hertz refresh rate on there. So that's something that I'm actually really excited to see. Are they doing it only on the external display or is it going to be available on the internal display as well? So that's something to keep in mind. So, you know, only time will tell. But today is what? August 22nd, September 1st is nine days away. We are very close to finding out a lot more. I'm hoping Sam, uh, Best Buy will start having them in their stores. Um, oh yeah, DTS is responding back there on that one. And okay, so Juan Plus 8 Pro, I love that one. Uh, th so we're going through some hashtags. Uh, some LG chill guy, and then of course some some punchable face guy. I haven't heard that one yet. Um, 
Next bit, Robin for the win, dude. Okay, Scott. So Scott had to come in there and bring it back with the next bit, Robin. So if you if you know if you know what the razor phone is, you know what you have to know where the, the next bit Robin comes in. Uh, that's pretty much what the razor phone one uh, is. Actually, even the razor phone two, if you think about it, the form factor didn't change. It's still a box, right? Um, but yeah, no, man. I remember the next bit. I used to. I was working uh, with XTA at the uh, the with Android Barbecue back in Texas. I think um, one year when uh, Next Bit was there, and the team there was just absolutely fantastic. I'm, I I found I was very sad to see when they sold, and uh, but I'm very happy that. Uh, well, I was happy that Razor kind of took over, right? And then they kind of carried it on, and then sadly it kind of ended again. So we'll have to see. But uh, man, you're bringing it back there, Scott. Appreciate it. Scott, yeah, no, definitely. See, no, you guys remember. Ah, I missed the Robin. Damn you, Razor. <laughs> Juan is on the same thing. No, dude, come on. Yeah, no, definitely. The, the next bit Robin, especially that, I want to say that lime green that they had, it, it's just crazy. Uh, before I go too far, I just realized we are getting close to that two-hour mark. It is one hour and 49 minutes, and it is time to do the inception. Uh, let me do this. Let me cancel this and hold on let's see who is it going to be who's going to be our inception guy today uh let's actually you know what it's going to be greg greg is going to be our guy today let's go ahead and we're going to bring in share the second screen oh you know what actually it'd be nice if i moved it there first right because the inception doesn't work otherwise so here we are share a second screen one two and <sighs> You got to remember doing it correctly. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's take out. We'll take out Greg real quick, and then whoa, we bring Greg back into it. So yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it way too much, way way too much. Um, the other thing that I'm also really excited about today, which I haven't really mentioned much, is I picked up a brand new pa uh, pair of uh, Brooks uh, Trans Seventeen. Um, Trans 7, sorry, not 17. I'm like jumping years ahead. Um, so brand new running shoes. Really, really excited to getting some new running shoes and breaking them in and actually trying to get it, enjoy running again. I I realized that I let my uh, my selection of uh, running shoes wear out too too much that it started to uh, cause some pain a little bit and it caused me to not run for the last couple of weeks, which kind of bums me out a little bit. Uh, but I definitely appreciate it. Running always kind of helps me de-stress. Uh, no more carrying a pen, owning a Samsung Note smart pen. Uh, no, definitely. There's a benefit, obviously, for the carrying part. I feel like Samsung has done uh, their homework on this for years, but where LG is finally starting to adapt it, I feel like we need to see some maybe third-party case manufacturers supporting casing cases with pen inserts, knowing that this is something that you can do. Because you don't need the second screen for the pen to work, right? This works on the primary screen because um, LG's done it in the right way, really. They're using the same panel on the main device that they use in the second screen in the case. So you're not losing the functionality. You just either have two displays or one. And if you do want that flexibility, you're able to flex it, of course. Um, the Razer good. The Razer phone was good. Uh, it was a good phone, but it lacked the triggers like the ROG and the Black Shark. Absolutely. Uh, there, there are some functions that you can do. And if I can only find it, oh, here it is. So um, look out for something. I don't know if you guys have seen this before. So um, Matt, not that I don't, I don't want to uh, jump into that one specifically, but if you've heard of something like this, this is called, and so right there, it's called a Falcon 4. This is from GameSir. This, my friend, brings triggers to every device, any device. And what I mean by any device, I mean... Any device. This is the Sam. The, this is the Sony. You know, the Xperia One II now has triggers. Easy, super simple, customizable, integratable, and they work on the display. They actually use uh, like a little electrodes on the actual unit itself here to actually initiate a touch on the display. So the only thing that they need is um, the game has to support reconfigurable buttons, and you're able to move your trigger and your whatever button you want to do. So for me, is um, crosshairs and trigger. I move them to the top in my PUBG. And I'm able to actually play it, and it works really good. Um, I'm working on a video for that one very soon. So this is the the Falcon, uh, the F4 Falcon from GameSir. Great gaming accessories, very very nice. But yes, I feel like the original, uh, the original, uh, you know, the the original Razer phone didn't have it, or even the second one. That was one of the limitations they had. 
Um, I do believe the Razer didn't learn, uh, didn't learn. Okay, so didn't lean into the gaming aspect as much as ROG. Um, it was one of the first uh, interactions of gaming devices in this, uh, and the speakers are and the screen, of course, were really, really good. Absolutely no. Uh, and I keep remembering even Project Lisa. That was the other thing that I really that never became because I, I don't know if it's because the demo was lost or got stolen at CES. Uh, but Juan Carlos and I were at CES during the year where they had it there, and they were actually using that that little you know docking mechanism running Android off of uh, the you know off of your phone and then using it as a touchpad. Um, they were doing some really good things with it, and I really I I was hoping for more. There was a lot of promise into that ecosystem that I don't think we saw uh, any kind of continuation there. But I, th I hope that we see more and more uh, come through from that. Uh, Mohammed Nasir saying is the Note 20 Ultra 4G versus 5G. Um, is it really worth the extra price since 5G is not available everywhere? So at the end of the day, this is where the difference is. I feel like the 4G model will have better battery life overall, not because there is a uh, an issue with 5G, uh, like you said, uh, its availability. Uh, but I feel like where it is right now, the 4G LTE capabilities in most areas are very comparable to the low band or the mid bands that we see from uh, for 5G in the US. Um, T-Mobile finally started working in the mid band and it's not even available in all of their markets. So there's something to be said there. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like as long as the RAM storage uh, configuration works for you, let that help you decide on the device more than the 4G and 5G. Because at the end of the day, you can turn off 5G on the, 4, on the 5G model and keep it to 4G and still get the benefits of not having to worry about 5G. So meaning the phone won't have to be seeking 5G technology to be trying to find it all the time. So it'll actually save power since 4G is more prominent, depending on where you are, of course, that also helps you as well. Uh, but if you can find the right configuration in 4G as far as the RAM storage with the device that you're looking for, I think it's a better deal. I, I really don't think 5G is big currently. It's going to be. This is what's going. what happens with what most people are doing is they're banking on the fact that 5G will be the biggest thing and they're future-proofing by going with 5G tech. The surprising factor is when we start seeing that from companies that are trying to push 5G on everything, releasing 4G models. So the question would be is, you know, so Sony released the Xperia 1 Mark II in the US, even though it's running the X55, even though it has the 865 plus, still doesn't have 5G, but that was cited purely because of the inconsistency in services that we have when it comes to 5G in the US. We have, you know, mid band, low band, uh, ultra, you know, uh, millimeter wave, uh, and depending on which carrier you're in, different markets you're in there, some carriers were giving you 5G E where that's not even close to being 5G. Um, so those are the things that you want to keep in mind, the different experiences you're getting. Uh, but it, like I said, I, I would say 4G should should be more than capable, but let the specifications make sure that they are always there. Uh, Greg, no, definitely. Uh, I, I see you guys enjoyed the inception there. <laughs> I didn't want to skip it. I don't, I don't, I don't forget it. I just, I think uh, the comment about it came up really early. Uh, what up, Meister? Hey man, good, good. I hope, oh, good day, right? It's noon. Um, Always, always, man. Indeed, yeah, just do mine's finger, uh, finger claws technique. <laughs> Juan Carlos is uh, actually. I think that's a response to a DTA. He's like, "Don't worry about it, man. Just do the nine finger claw technique and and hold the phone with the with the pinky. <laughs> Got to get that." It's like, eh, I don't know. I'm not sure how to do this. Um, I, I like I like accessories that that do function uh, that do add function and of course can turn any game any phone into a trigger phone because it's such a small inexpensive little accessory. It charges via USB C, so easy to charge it, easy to keep it running with you, and of course just works really really good. Um, I think a mid band five G will work better than the millimeter bands. Absolutely, no, no. Um, Juan Carlos and I did uh, had a I want to say last year had an opportunity to go check out Sprint's mid band rollout in the LA area, and we were easily getting about four hundred to four hundred and fifty uh, megabits down. Uh, to me, that was ridiculous. Um, now, yeah, it's it's nowhere close to millimeter wave, but we didn't need to have that line of sight function, and it also worked better indoors because of the way it bounces, uh, the signal bounces better. So there's going to be, I think, a bigger push for mil uh, for sub six when it comes to mid band and low band. I think low band is for the most part right now, I, and I can't find a situation where it will just basically work that much better. Uh, runs almost as good as 4G LTE for me, at least for me in T-Mobile land in the current market where I am. If we're jumping into millimeter wave, uh, sorry, into mid band, I feel like that's where uh, Sprint was really uh, giving us some of those really good uh, speeds. 
So you're going to average between 200 to 450. I think those are the those are the speeds that we should be getting with the 5G. When you're selling 5G to people, those are the things that people expect. They want to see speeds on their devices that are faster than what they can currently get on their 4G LTE. Hands down, that's what people expect. When they get the technology and they suddenly are getting speeds that are comparable, roughly about the same, it kind of makes you feel like, well, what did I just get the 5G for, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it is going to get better. And I think the merger of Sprint and T-Mobile, if nothing else, that's probably going to be the best benefit as a user, uh, as long as that doesn't end up becoming a paywall kind of a thing. And I hope it doesn't. Um, America is way behind on the 5G race, I agree. But you know what? It's slowly coming in. And as it always end, ends up being, uh, by the time we get there, everybody else is jumping in on the next thing. But it, it's okay. I think overall, um, for me right now, ever since we've jumped on the 5G with uh, T-Mobile, I've, I've noticed more consistent speeds, better performance. But again, it, like I said, it's still to me, if I turn it off and go back to 4G LTE, for the most part, it stays the same. Um, oops, sorry, Juan. Uh, mostly depends on how long you'd like to uh, you'll like to keep the phone, except very little network improvements on LTE. Oh no, absolutely! I think if anything, what they're trying to do, um, and I think what, what they mentioned to us back then is they're adding 5G. They're swapping in uh, the antennas, the 4G LTE antennas, with 5G ones slowly, and the 5G antennas are backwards compatible. So yeah, for the most part. All their focus is on the 5G network. Uh, improvements on 4G LTE is pretty much limited to what it currently is out there. Um, right now, T-Mobile only gets uh, about five megabits. Oh, wow. T-Mobile only gets five megabits down on LTE and about 30 for 5G in my neighborhood. That's actually not bad. That's actually a really good improvement, but five, five megabits down is really slow. So I think what they're doing is they're swapping in the 5G a lot more, or they're maybe putting out some of those um, I think the the um, what I was going to say the uh, they're putting out more of the five G towers, which I hope is really good. And of course, I just got a notification on my phones telling me that my uh, my running shoes are out for delivery. So yeah, maybe I may end up going for a run later this afternoon. Um, one uh, sellers are saying is uh, I'm on Call of Duty Mobile would work well with those controllers. Uh, would love to see see it. Oh, uh, to see it on the Switch though. Um, this was something that will be interesting. If you, so you're thinking of using something a little bit bigger than that on the Switch, so you're basically keeping it on one controller without having to use the controls. It'll be interesting. I, I don't think it will work on the Switch mostly because of the uh, the thickness on it. There's actually a certain limitation of how thick this can be, um, and it actually does have a little bit of cushioning on the back on the front. Uh, it's a unique little gaming thing. So I'm I'm actually. Like I said, I've been playing it. Play, I've been playing with uh, here on the Xperia One Mark II, uh, mostly because of uh, hardware concerns, as you know. Um, yeah, no, definitely. So we are getting five Gs. <laughs> Matt's just now. You're just egging us, man. That well, yeah. There's a lot of concerns going on with. Um, with 5g in the uh, in europe especially in the uk so it's it's very hard to, to see there's anywhere where you get new technology and the weird part about it is um we heard a lot of things similar to this roughly when 4g was first coming out so it is always going to be interesting um, like our laptops non macbooks of course have the proper array of uh, of ports um, in the near future we'll get phones with multiple USB-C ports example like the rg phone 2 absolutely uh, the fact that the phone has three USB C's which was crazy and uh, initially when I first tried to figure out if I can actually do this play out and I was like I plugged it in through the standard port and I'm like man this thing doesn't work and then I remembered that actually no wait a minute rg has three USB C's now the third one obviously I can't use but the secondary black one that we have on the side is the display port and that's how it has it so plugging it in obviously is always good um they have powerful versatile in, uh, they need to be powerful versatile to use and uh, with use peripherals on them i, I agree no it, it's it's something that i think we we should always be uh, you know have more options i think the the pcbs as as devices get better and as time goes on uh, motherboards, if you notice, I mean, if you've ever opened up your phone, the back of the phone or the actual device, if when you look at it realistically, this isn't all circuitry. The boards are not actually covering the entire device. You'll have them primarily housed in the top part of your phone, sitting right above where the battery will have somewhat of a big space in here in the back. So depending on how size it is. And then you'll have a small board on the bottom if you have, an, uh, let's say, a headphone jack or basically your adapter for the speaker as well as the, uh, you know, basically your charging port. Uh, circuitry can get definitely smaller. Hopefully, we'll have more functions. Uh, again, ASUS is able to prove to us multiple times that they're able to integrate three USB-C ports on a device with a massive battery, a headphone jack, and 120 frames refresh rate uh, device. 
there's no question it's going to definitely be appreciated there. So I agree. Uh, we need to have more function. And I, I'm a big advocate for multi multifunctional tools when, when they do great, you know, so when they work great, um, don't use it just for one. Like I said, this is a great gaming rig, but it's also a great editing rig. So for me, those are the functions that I need it to be. I can't have it just where I have a very nice gaming system that does really badly in video editing, because at that point, I have to rely on too many options. Um, Sarvana Raj says, TK, do you think that the Exynos version of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra supports UFS 3.1? Samsung's official website has no info um, on the specs saying it supports FS. Uh, I, so I do want to say that I don't think it's 3.1. I think it supports UFS 3.0. I've seen a speed test done on one on one of my buddies that has the Note 20 Ultra, and it is actually uh, 3.0. So, uh, but I, I can't confirm it's 3.1 or 3 3.0, uh, but definitely 3.0. Uh, I think OnePlus is one of the very few ones that actually support 3.1 uh, currently. But yeah, no, it, it is fast internal storage. They didn't change that. That that aspect of the device did not change. Um, and this community is just so good. No, always, Javier, I appreciate it. Uh, it's always, always great. Um, so with that being said, I did. I just realized we crossed the two hours. I do want to say, first and foremost, thank you to everybody for joining us. Uh, Gary, of course, uh, hanging out with us. Uh, Javier, of course, uh, you know, of course, uh, Aditya and Aditya, since we have a couple now. Uh, we have Matt Tyler. Sam was jumping in there. Juan Carlos, of course, always, always. I am very, very much um, uh, jealous of, uh, I didn't see... Um, Fat Bro, I didn't see if Fat Produce was in the comments. I do want to say if I did miss you, uh, sorry about that, bud. Uh, Greg was in there as well. I want to say good morning, of course. Everybody else, Matt, Sam. Make sure to catch Matt and Sam on Monday this week. Uh, they're going to have Super Saf and John Redinger as guests on the Across the Podcast. Uh, we have Josh Quinones that hung out with us at the beginning, of course. Hopefully, he can get on their show as well. Uh, Gary, as always. Uh, David Burns, of course. Uh, and I don't think I saw Steve today, but if uh, if you did jump in there, Steve, I want to say thank you very much for hanging out with us. And, of course, Goran Petrovic, as always. Uh, and if I did miss anybody, I do want to apologize. But uh, you know I always appreciate you guys being part of the team. Um, with that being said, be safe, be cool. Thank you for everybody and all the support that you gave me on um, on the RG phone too. I, like I said, I am very. Um, it is very interesting that the the way the damage was done that it actually there's no damage on the external display, but it was apparently hard enough of a uh, of a as I was putting it on the table, it was hard enough on it because of the edge as if I suppose, I guess, I guess when I was putting my hand on, it didn't hit the table right away, but, and because of the openness and the edge of the table, my actually hand came in and kind of went down, um, caused the actual LCD to break, but not the glass. So, but the entire thing is one assembly. So hopefully, uh, once that piece comes in, I did put in an order, uh, <laughs> fun and full. full uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I, oh, so that's what I want to say. I want to say thank you to Gary. Thank you, uh, to Matt for throwing in a few, uh, few, some few bucks there as well, uh, to help support the, uh, the replacement of the, the, you know, bringing this guy back to life, uh, you know, uh, fun. That's what I would probably say that the bringing back the ROG phone to, to, uh, to life. Um, I do need to pick up a, a, a kit, so I'll probably be checking out uh, one of the other guys as well, see uh, the, see the comments we have on uh, Twitter, uh, which kit to pick up to be able to do the uh, the replacement correctly. And I actually, I wouldn't mind doing like an hour-long live stream just to kind of get that in there, and then maybe we can do a screen replacement of reviving the ROG phone too. We'll do that as a live stream on its own. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, of course. And uh, Matt, oh man, dude, I appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Matt throwing in another super chat. Chemi, thank you very much, of course. Gary, as well, uh, with everything you guys have been doing, you've been great. Um, be safe, be good. Uh, I will hopefully be pushing out some more videos. The Pixel 4a review is almost done. I'm going to be pushing that out. Actually, make sure to check out Juan Carlos's uh, video when that comes out as well. The uh, uh, Pixel 4a by the Benchmarks video is coming out where he does his actual assessment and he offers the assessment of obviously how does the Pixel 4a st stack up and how you should look at it from a benchmark point of view. And I love that new series he's been doing. It's actually really, really nice. Um, across the podcast as usual and uh, <laughs> oh man dude thank you appreciate it and of course aditya jumping in tkr base save the rg phone too um thank you very much uh, i i really really appreciate you guys always great always there always hanging out and uh, i love hanging out checking out with checking out a lot of cool things with you guys um 
hopefully the shoes show up really soon. I'll be, I'll try to see if I can get on the treadmill and uh, do a quick run with them, just see how they feel. They're supposed to be much, much better than the Trans 3 that I have. So that's the last generation that I carried. Uh, and then of course, they're going to be really good. And as soon as I get the new screen, I'll uh, I'll share with you guys some stuff on the Discord uh, and we'll we'll talk about setting up a time and we'll do a live stream. Literally going through disassembling the ROG Phone 2, going in, replacing it and bringing it back to life. I think that'll be a great video to do. Uh, maybe you know I'll see. We'll we'll see what we can do. We can uh, we'll we'll bring in some some of you guys. Have you guys jump in and give me some uh, some pointers. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll let Aditya answer who the new Aditya is. That's the best way to say it. Uh, but again, thank you very much. Again, be safe, stay safe, stay cool if you can, of course. And I'll see you guys next week. And of course, uh, look forward to some more content. Um, and I'll have some more new things coming up. Uh, I want to actually do a revisit. I want to revisit the uh, the Xperia One Mark II. Uh, I want to play a little bit more with it if, uh, since I've gotten it back with some of the new updates that they pushed out. Thank you very much again. I'll see you next week. And uh, make sure to check out the audio version of the live stream if you guys would like to, uh, as that one will be live within about an hour or so after the show airs. See you guys next time.